Вольфи. Deathmatch, my friend, want to say hi to everybody. Hello, everyone. Fantastic to have you here. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's going to be wonderful to have you. Yeah. Uh, the first uh, tournament without bots, so it's going to be... That is correct. We yeah. are playing on custom games today, which is so incredibly exciting. Yeah, so let's choose one team for the... I am ready. Yeah, let's go ahead and get started here. Let's uh, start watching Calamity and Runa. Uh... I'm watching Clemens right now. He's playing uh, right, Hunter. Uh, the reason why we pick this team, in my humble opinion, they are biggest favorites to this tournament. They are they are fantastic players, both of them. They've performed very, very well at just about every tournament event they've been a part of. So uh, certainly a good one to get started here. Yeah, and they're both from Ukraine. Uh, and the interesting thing that uh, the meta changed in the game, right? So... Clemens is playing Hunter and Rune is playing Assassin and both of them uh, used to play another heroes before. Uh, Clemens played only Warrior and Rune played only Mage. So uh, what was your opinion uh, behind that change here? Why do you think they, they made those class changes? Uh, I'm surprised that Rune changed to Assassin and I'm not surprised that Clemens changed to Hunter. The reason is uh, he changed. Uh, Warrior is very weak right now, so... And Hunter is probably the best for duos because of the crossbow build. So it's not a big surprise for me. As you can see, not all much action here between them. They've gotten some shards and grabbing some armor potions. Now, again, remember, the action is going to be a lot higher intensity here. Given that there are no bots, every single fight is against other tournament players. That means shards are going to be harder to come by. Forges are going to be a lot more contested. Things are going to be a lot scarier for every single player on the field here. Yeah, and Coleman's and Runa surpri uh, surprised me, and they landed in Lumberfall. It's pretty open uh, location, uh, so... And nobody is here, you know, like... Uh... I think it's an interesting counter strategy here, because I feel like a lot of people are going to avoid the traditional hot drops, thinking a lot of people will be there. I think you could probably get away with dropping Lumberfall or Crossing with very little action right now. Yeah, probably. I agree with you. Uh, so probably nobody in crossing right now, right? <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah, just ghost down right there. Everyone dropped on the edges. That's the, that's the real hot. Yeah. Here. As far as we can see in the kill feed, Shorty Cat and Kapski just won a fight. Looks like Idiot Mouse will also take down Toxic there with a yeah. revolver in that corner there. Skylance will take down Doctor Tep as well. We're spectating Baggins right now over in the brand new Lost Forge. A really really pretty spot here. You can see Dr. Rutger and uh, 21 Soko here. We're a good Swedish team. With One of uh, the two too. kills uh, uh, total to their team right now. Not too bad at all. Picking up a few items out of that forge. They're going to be very ready to go here. Hopping over to Heavenly and Idiot Mouse. You can see they're healing up from that last engagement. Two kills overall for them in Northport. Now, they're still playing like there might still be someone around here. They're very cautious. Uh, it's a favorite uh, uh, drop for Heavenly, and Heavenly is a uh, uh, caller in this team uh, because uh, I played with Heavenly a lot and Idiot Mouse too in squads, and so Heavenly always drop it Northport, like he never changed. Sometimes he can drop in uh, Trinity, but that's it. So even with this zone, as far as you can see, they dropped Northport. That means you know you're going to be in for a dangerous duo if you decide to go Northport. They do have a long way to move, but it looks like they got their uh, first forges in ahead of time, so that's all right. Popping over to Lear here. It looks like Lear and Sneaky got her very low. Might be in the middle of a fight here in Forbidden Swamp. You can see those uh, slug shots going down there. There's someone in the forge right now. Lear is going to circle around on the Raptor here, followed by Sneaky God directly behind. And it's they forbidden. are getting out of dodge. In Forbidden, uh, Shreddy Kit loves Forbidden and Kapskia. They are heading right on out of that. Let's check out Adapt here. So we've got Adapt and two Risky. Zero kills right now in Trinity Hills. Adapt won the last out. solo. Very good player. 
Now, it looks like, unfortunately, here, with zero kills and with the uh, the zone coming in, they're probably going to have to rotate away from the Trinity Forge with zero forges to their name. So not very much gear for that duo here on this side. We've also got Jeffrey the Best inside Guntown, one of the newly redesigned locations. Rune and Clemens like have a, a fight at Lumberfall right now. Runa and Coleman's are in a fight at the moment, so we're going to hop on over to them right here. They're in Lumberfall. Runa has been knocked very low here. A lot of shards to their name, but nothing active in the forge. Popping some extra potions. Looks like he is now out of potions. Unfortunate for him, he's going to drop his shards immediately into the forge. And Runa playing Sensor Drone, which uh, is also surprisingly. A lot of assassins nowadays playing uh, Kong Bomb, but he decided to um, play with Vision. One of the reasons he can... Uh, choose this build. He's a caller in the team, and Colemins just uh, follow his calls. So probably Runa always give the vision and give good calls for Colemins about where's the enemy at. I feel that with uh, with the change into custom lobbies here in the tournament format, I think that vision is going to be prioritized a lot more heavily than it That's is in public for lobbies. sure. For sure, that both player. Yeah. Very key. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah, so with those uh, sweaty games, uh, the vision will be one of the most important uh, basic skills. Sliding on over here as the zone yeah. begins to close. Thy King David and FPGG with two kills to their name are currently in Fungal Jungle. Moving around here, they're going to have the zone for the next forge and a, a good enough amount of shards here to go for a forge if they want to. Munch and uh, Buckins already have four kills. It means that they killed two teams. Looks like they're still just hanging around in Lost Forge as well. I think they just won that last fight there, so they've got themselves a nice amount of shards again and a good Forge spot inside the zone. Hopping back over here to Idiot Mouse and Heavenly. They've got two kills. They're in a fight right now. Crossbow screaming down here from Idiot Mouse right now. The Blast Arrow is not going to connect. He's going to land a few shots with that crossbow, but they're going to rotate a little bit here, try and get better positioning. What are they fighting with? Let me try to find... A beautiful couple of shots here. They're fighting in the zone, and that's a quick chicken right there. But they're both low and inside the zone still. They will pick up the kill there. Heavenly will get the first one on MX Zeta. But they are still taking damage. Idiot Mouse has been chickened. Looks like Heavenly might get the counter chicken, though. Uh, it's Moon. very bad for Heavenly and Mouse. they going to die in fog. So they, they took a fight. They might be able to get out of here, though. Heavenly does not have many potions in their name, but did just pick up a kill. I think he might have enough potions to make it out. And uh, looks like they are going to barely, licking their wounds, get out of that fight alive at 2-2. Two and two. Yeah. Okay, so Mouse will still be alive. Not sure about Heavenly. But still, uh, with this uh, fight, after this fight, they will not recover, I think, in this uh, match. So they have to play p uh, for placement now. Absolutely. It's going to be very tough being that low, low on potions as well. They thankfully have the healing flask to get themselves back up to full HP, but, but with no armor, they're going to have a hard time in these late game fights. Alternate playing with Shrudel, with, which is surprising because um, he used to play with Heavenly before, so it's like a new team for these duos. Taking a look at Schrody, Cat, and Kubski here on our feed. They are currently with two kills on the team. They're also around the Lost Forge area. Surprised they haven't run into Baggins at some point in time around here. Uh, I'm watching Sokka and Rugger. They just won a fight against Smash team. Uh, switching to Heavenly and Indeed Mouse. Well, they're both alive. It would... <laughs> Mouse they are both armor. alive, and they're in another fight, though. Yeah. They're just going from one fight to the next. Spectating right now, we currently have Heavenly on your cam here, popping out that sniper. You can see he's heading into the engagement. Idiot Mouse is already taking some damage, but it looks like he might already have a chicken. He does. Yeah, I think Heavenly's just sitting over here guy... like nothing's wrong. Yeah, this guy was solo. I saw him before, so uh, it was easy fight for Heavenly and Mouse. Lucky for them, they might even pick up some extra potions here and get themselves into a better spot healing-wise. Idiot Mouse will at least pop that one armor potion there, and uh, now they've got a gold snipe to their name as well. Not too bad. Buggins and Munch is uh, and Munch in very good position right now because Zone ends in Lost Forge, and they landed in Lost Forge. So they already killed two teams, and they uh, have the best position right now. But if you can hear that you just heard that chest sound open right there, they know there is someone else around Lost Forge. We were actually just spectating Schrody Cat a little while ago. That may very well be that same duo. You can see them moving on in slowly. The zone closing in right now. 
It's funny there that nobody zone. plays warrior. <laughs> you can see that <laughs> almost Yeah, the nobody. axe changes appear to have scared a lot of warrior players off it's very quickly. It's not just scared, it's just uh, deleted it from the competitive scene. <laughs> Indeed, yeah, it's just out. <laughs> Down it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I can I cannot see a single player who plays warrior. Everyone plays uh, mostly hunter, assassin, and mage. Yeah, I think there is zero warriors right now. So yeah, uh, Kapski and Shorty Cat also have a good good position in Lost Watch already. Hang on, Deathmatch, my friend. I'm going to drop you off of communication here. Uh, Potato is trying to get a hold of me here, so one second. Hello, hello. Yes. All right. So it sounds like we were having some audio issues with being able to hear you. So I'm going to get a yes or no in chat if that's working. Oh, uh, I'm talking. And uh... it's working. Great. Okay. Yeah. That means we've got we've got your audio and we've also got desktop audio. Fantastic. Yay. That's great. All righty then. One second here. I'm going to drop you out one more time. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Watching uh, Kalamins and Runa right now. Baggins and Munch have a great fight against Heavenly and uh, 
Um, Idiot Mouse, they won it. Alrighty, fantastic. So we should be on a three minute delay now, just so you know that's not gonna affect us and our speaking, but we should have that taken care of now. Looks like uh, Baggins and Munch, I can hear some footsteps here. They are close, they're engaging on a fight. There's that bolt staff, they're gonna pop the healing station real quick. They're all down to about half health here. Dangerous fight, they're gonna get a single chicken off the side here, and there they go. Looks like they've got a second chicken here. Uh, and it, they will easily pick up both. It games. looks like uh, Baggins and Munch in this round will have a lot of points. They already have eight kills, which is super big for eight kills custom lobbies. Is massive yes. right now. It's absolutely massive. Very big game for them. Is it Europe or USA Coleman, server? What was that? Uh, what server right now is it? Ah, it's USA, okay. So, uh, for Baggins and Munch, it's very good to have a great game on NA server. Right, since they're EU players, that means they'll have even yes. less latency on their next fight yes. here. Yes. They loot very good. Uh, they have really good loot. So they. Now, this is a very fascinating end game here, because we are in Lost Forge. Lost Forge is like a four-story structure now with lots of different layers for fighting. With these last 14 players, you can have people standing right on top of each other and not be able to fight or engage. Yes, and very important that it's a brand new forge. So some players even don't know uh, how to rotate here and where to hide. Because they Currently changed watching the watching Perplex, Taken, and Dre there on the outside of Lost Forge moving in with the zone. Nobody else in visibility, but you see a few uh, shots fired around the ring here as they begin to move in. 14 players remaining in this game. Are you still feeling like Runa and Coleman's might take game one here? Uh, not sure about that. They don't have very good loot. Um... Ooh, looks like they are in a fight as we speak. Runa right now is going to go ahead and reload and back off a little bit using that sensor drone to try and figure out where people are. This sensor drone is going to be so valuable in this Forge endgame here. Yeah. So I don't see day scenario in this lobby. I'm probably they playing in another lobby. We have two lobbies, right? Correct. In fact, I think we even have three lobbies. Oh, it's so many players. It's great for the competitive scene of Realm. It is. Yeah, I think we have what over two hundred players playing today, which is just a massive amount and an absolutely incredible. Right Russian now Kupski we've got Doctor, Doctor, They're Doctor. fighting. Kopski is chicken. There's a fight. They've got one chicken. Fantastic work there. And then being pushed by two. Runa and Kolomins. Runa already killed Shrodikat. And they're about to finish Kopski, I believe. It looks like they're going to have to back off, though. They've got another fight immediately on top of themselves. Runa's taking some damage in the backside. He is going to be chickened. Unfortunate for him right there. Yeah, Kolomins should down. finish Kopski. Looks like Kubski is still alive, according to the tab feed here. He is actually still in it. He might have... Oh, there he goes. Yeah. Alternate takes down Kubski on the far side. Alternate finished him. Uh, so, Suka, Soko and Radger, 10 kills. Oh, my God. So good game for them and very good loot. They look very, very good for for this uh, for the end of this game. Coleman's and Runa do still have some health potions to their name. Very little armor, but they still made it out of that fight alive. I'm impressed they were able to escape at all there near that end. See a few uh, shots coming out there. Check in at Alternate and not Shrudel. They're at five kills right now. Alternate using that flare there. Again, vision being very important, especially in a fight like this. They've and got themselves on the zone. Most of the players don't have armor portions right now, which is key factor. I do feel like armor might be a huge, huge determining factor here in people. Perplex, Dry and Taken have armor bots and they have full armor, almost full armor. You're right, they've been playing passively here for most of this game. They have a lot of armor to their name, but they're going to have a hard time getting into the zone. Begin to move in through the open field there. Runa and Coleman's are in a fight again. Coleman's is down to about one tenth HP and so is Runa. Now they have a healing shout. Legendary healing shout is very good for them. And it looks like they're in a very good position, to be honest. They are definitely not bad. You can hear some chickens being popped all over the place. People are dropping on every end of the screen here. Baggins and Munch have found themselves an incredible little spot right there. A nice little area to hang out. Right what away from what we are watching right now is top level gameplay of Realm. 
Insidiosity and Miha, and I could not agree more. Top realm play. Honestly, being able to find a spot like that in the zone where you are not taking any damage is the perfect place to hide for this endgame. Here are more shots being fired as Perplex taken takes out alternate with a Frost Heirloom. Shrewdle by himself is in a fight, but he chickens one. Can yeah. he clutch up the kill? That chicken is one shot away there, Deathmatch. The the thing is, uh, alternate uh, finished uh, Sokka and Radger and got killed because he was he wanted to finish the chicken. Well, that greed may not have paid off for him, yeah. but it looks like it's still doing okay for Shrudel here. Shrudel will pick up another kill. That's eight for the duo. Runa grabbing another kill off the fire. They found Baggins! Yes, and it was a great move by Runa. Actually, so right now, they looks like they are favorites in this game, to me, at yeah, least. Yeah, they do still have their full duo left. Baggins by himself will pop the healing station again and get back up to full health. He is being aggressed on, though. 12 seconds left on that sore. He's going to run into the zone to try to stay alive and heal up. That is not a spot that you want to be in here. Stuck in the zone with very little left to do. So it's Shrudel, Solo, Baggins, Solo, Rune, and Clements together against uh, Perplex guys. Looks like Runa will tag that snipe. He's going to chicken Baggins. I don't think he can quite get the kill, though. He's going to have to run away. Nope, Runa will get him with the Death Fog. He'll get him with that last tick there and pick up the kill. That means Baggins is out. We are down to our final five. Hello to chat. Wonderful to have you all here. Thank you for stopping by and hanging out with the tournament. I apologize for the technical difficulties off the start. I think that Rune and Clem is going to win it. They have high ground, great loot, and vision. But here is the interesting thing. Now, see, not Shrudel is still rocking three armor potions and ten health potions. If, for whatever reason, this came to a heal-off, if nobody could actually get into an engage before the zone closed, I think Shrudel might have the advantage here. Oh, Perplex, guys. They also have full armor. Wait. I know. So, Kalem and Runa, actually, they should start the fight. And as far as I know, Runa, he's a very smart player. And probably he understands it right now. So maybe he will make a call that they should fight. Looks like dry and taken here. Definitely full armor and full health for them. Playing the cautious fights definitely helped as far as their placement is concerned. Only four kills, but that's still not bad, especially for being one of three teams alive left here. You can hear the blink and the fight begins. We've got some duos and they are going at it. There is a single chicken popped right there. Taken and dry are still alive, but he is taking some damage as well. There so, it is. Runa will go down and Coleman's will go down as well. Taking uh, and dry armor won advantage. that fight for sure for Perplex and Shrudel. Shrudel actually such a good player. He can probably clutch it. And smart move by Shrudel. He goes uh, down and probably they will. he will go for this thing. For the slow game. Yep, I think it's a smart move to go for the slow game. You can hear the blinks coming out from the other team. I don't know if they're 100% sure what level Shrudel is on. The zone is closed. They're going to have to walk through the zone. Oh my god, if Shrudel will win this, it will be epic. <laughs> <laughs> Shrudel might be going for the Fortnite-style heal-off right now. He's yeah, and, uh, own... and he's a yeah, good Fortnite player, so probably this experience helps him uh, right now. And... Alright, so right now, Taken has 10 health pots to his name. Dry has 10 as well. So they have a total of 11 pots and a passive repair. Shrudel popping a sword to try and bait them out here. Now, he also has a passive repair. He's I think Shrudel will win. If, if they will not attack him right now, Shrudel gonna win. Shrudel does also have a healing increase rune and a chicken health rune. Both are gonna be huge in a heal-off situation. I don't know. Uh, we, we, <laughs> we will see a very interesting <laughs> ending. Man. We may be seeing the first ever competitive zero zone finale here. Yes. They're gonna use the flare. Do they find the vision on Shrudel? I don't think they do. Five seconds before the zone closes in. Yeah, but it's not the last zone. I mean, like, but this zone will be like definitely after this zone shrink, uh, it will be hard for Perplex uh, to fight Shrudel. They had a uh, moment, but now it's impossible for them to fight him. So right. I think, yeah, uh, I they think... could both go for the blink play here. Unfortunately, yeah. neither of them have a sword to really maneuver. So if they blink out, they're going to have a hard time. They'll have to jump off the edge and try and blink into him if they're going to take this fight. Uh... Sharing armor potions for the heal off. I don't think that's a smart idea. I think honestly the best idea here is to hoard all of your potions onto one person and let. The I agree. I agree with you. And actually, I think it looks it looks like it's, there is no chance for them to win uh, over Shrudel because he have passive, right? He have 
He does. More armor pots. And he have chicken health, right? Right. But, but I think I think if Perplex and Dry play this correctly, I think they can come out on top. If they let one of them, Taken in particular, if they let Taken die and give all 10 of the health potions over to Dry, then he will have essentially an unlimited supply of health potions to to win out the heal off. And there is one thing, the icon for the chicken health is the same as the new chicken uh, rune. So we actually don't know for sure what rune should we have and what rune uh, perplex guys have. So th this is the same icon for one more life of chicken and chicken health. And it's oh, very important right, so right it now. Oh, you're right, it can be a chicken one-up rune. That's yes, it point. can be chicken one-up rune. So if if Shrudel right. have chicken one-up rune... He might. Oh, uh, I is going for it. The fight has started, but Shrudel's in the zone. This is going to be a problem here. Oh Rye my is, god. Rye is chicken and done. Oh no, well, that was a huge misplay by the perplexity boy. First of all, it was smart way for uh, for them to do it. So, basically, uh Dry tried to take away health from Shrudel alone and taken is stay uh, on top. So, it's it was very good play, but the problem was that Shrudel just outplayed uh, the guy, the Drew. Yeah, he was absolutely ready for it, and uh, and that's pretty huge. Now, he did drop off all of his potions before he left, so it looks like they are ready for the heal off. We're going to see who comes out on top here. 600 armor to the 975 here of Shrudel. He's going to pop up his armor potions and get as high as he can before the zone closes in. The zone is going to disappear, Deathmatch. Oh, my God. I Actually, I have been to this situation, but not in tournament in a public game. And here it goes. The zone finally... Gone, and there it is. Shrudel begins taking some serious damage. Uh, Shrudel as win. Well as Shrudel perplex. win. For sure. Oh, Perplexity is barely healing. Or Perplex Sh taking yeah. is barely healing in time. He's already chicken. Yep, that's it. I think Shrudel's got the win. He oh. did it. Oh my god, man. What we just saw is a great exemplar of uh, how cool can be Realm Royale on competitive level. And it's great that we start uh, t tonight with this game, you know? <laughs> Indeed, that was that was absolutely insane. I honestly cannot believe we came down to a heal off and Shrudel clutching the one v two. Very very impressive. And he there. lost alternate when it was like probably six team alive. So uh, he was solo for a long time. Yeah, he was indeed. Yeah, he 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 stayed solo for the vast majority of that one there and was still able to come out on top. Very very good gameplay right there. Very impressive stuff. Hello, everybody. Wonderful to have you all here. By the way, we are on a three-minute delay, so if you're typing in the chat, we will definitely get to what you're saying, but know that it will be a little bit behind what you all are seeing. Uh, I'd like to do a formal introduction, since we didn't have much time and we had to jump straight into game number one. My name is Mr. Wolf. Uh, I'm your face here today, and I'm one of our casters behind the desk, and I am joined by the lovely and incredible Deathmatch TV. Hello, everyone. Uh, no face today, only voice. <laughs> Only voice indeed, but that's all right. Your voice, your voice is heavenly as it is, and uh, and it is great, <laughs> Thank great you. stuff. All right, so we have finished our game number one, which is amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and check on over on the Realmcom hub here. We're gonna see if any of our scoreboards or stats have been updated yet for game number one. Now, usually there's one game delay between our stats and scoreboards and our actual uh, our play here, so we'll have to check it out and see uh, see when that gets updated here. Deathmatch, what did you think of our game number one? Oh, I'm impressed. I mean, like, uh, the ending was so tactical, uh, and I loved that uh, Perplex uh, guys, they actually made the right uh, call, so they kept one player with ho all the portions, and another player went for a fight against Shrudel. But unfortunately for Perplex, uh, Shrudel outplayed that player, and that was the reason why he won. Because... Right. Yeah. But uh, Absolutely, yeah. I, the, him being able to take down that kill there without taking any damage himself, that, that Conk Bomb was so clutch to knock yes. him out of the window. Uh, that's why Conk Bomb such a great basic ability in the end of the game. Absolutely. So you just uh, Conk Bomb uh, your opponent so, uh, to the zone and they just die. And so many players in this uh, custom lobbies will uh, be playing very patiently and will not push... So it's right, which is moment. exactly what, what Shrudel knew and got him the uh, the win there at the end of the game. All right, so what we are going to go over here, because it doesn't look like the scoreboard itself has been set up, we're going to go over the scoring system here for all of you guys to understand uh, exactly how the points are going to be tallied 
uh, for our finals. So as you can see, here's the scoring system. Points will be awarded both for placement and eliminations combined together for a round score with a larger emphasis on elimination over placement points. The scoring table is right here with the maximum points per round at 52. A crown royale will get you plus two points. That is your only positive score here is taking away that win. Second place is a negative one. Third place is negative two. Fourth through sixth is negative three. Seven to tenth is negative four. And everything else is negative five. Is negative five. Now, elimination points. You get a total of two points per elimination, meaning getting an elimination can get you the same amount of bonus points as a Crown Royale. So we are putting a huge emphasis on getting kills this time around. It's a new system, and we will uh, see uh, what feedback players will give it uh, for this system. Um, I think it's cool to uh, prior kills over placement, so we will see more action. I appreciate rewarding aggressive play. I think that, that one of the beautiful things about Realm Royale as a battle royale is that the, the way the Forge and Shard system are set up is that it rewards aggressive play, and I like a tournament format that does the exact same thing. I agree with you, and uh, as uh, as far as the player will realize how to play with the new system, they probably will take more fights, and we will see more action, more beautiful kills, and more more good Realm Royale tournaments. Exactly. Now, the prize pool here for this event is $500, with first place going to $350 and an invitation to the 5K. Second place is $100, as well as an invitation to the 5K. And third place will be $50, as well as another invitation. Now, that is some lovely prizes to be given away this time around. Don't you agree? Yes, and uh, the amount of uh, support Hasa gives to Realm community is just insane, and everyone should uh, say thank you for the legend. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. We could not be doing Realm Competitive the way we are right now if it wasn't for this. It's, it's very, very wonderful that we, that we have the opportunity to get to create a community-focused Realm Competitive scene. Um, now, really quick, Deathmatch, I'm going to put you on hold so I can hop into the roll call and get myself yes. the information for the next round. Alrighty, there we go, Deathmatch, you are back in and we are good to go. We're in the lobby and ready for game number two. It's good to be back. <laughs> good to have you back. Yeah. I'm back in black, by the way, like ACDC, you know? So. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, guys, I want I want to have Deathmatch's face here too, but um, our, our Google Hangout causes so much latency that Deathmatch can't even yeah. watch the game. So then we can't have uh, his webcam and this up at the same time. Yeah, probably in the future, uh, devs will give us opportunity to do something for the spec mode. And I was talking right. with Nash back in the days, and he told me that they have plans to give the spec, special spec mode to to Realm Real. So Which would be perfect, because then we yes. can just join and spectate ourselves, and then we don't even have to worry about any of yes. that stuff. We can get your beautiful, lovely face on the desk. Anyway, uh, now we have custom lobbies and we can watch every player, which is great, great opportunity for everyone. And it makes the coverage much better. And yeah, overall. Yeah, something that I'm, I'm really, really happy about. The, the amount of amazing players that we didn't get the opportunity to see or watch their action because they weren't streaming any of our tournaments. Uh, it was, it was you know, always terrible to have to miss out on those things. So it's great to finally have the opportunity to see all of those things. Yeah, so now we going to the water uh, faster than it was before because, uh, you know, the zone just starts from the water. <laughs> so probably we will not miss uh, first fights at all. So let's see who uh, who is in our game because we can see the players list, right? It's 70. Exactly, we can indeed. So yeah, let's go ahead and come over here and check out our lobby right now. So it looks like our lobby as it stands here. Uh, we've got Skylancer and Loris, Strid and Nail. Ooh, we have Crippler and uh, Galilean in this match. We have Clemens and Runa. Uh, Mouse and Heavenly. 
We've got uh, Smash MZ as well as White Hammer. Idiot Mouse and Heavenly are going to be in this game. Lalahu and Reed. We still don't have uh, Aaron Days, right? Oh, we have Aaron Days. Let's watch Aaron Days because they didn't play in the lobby that we watched before, and they're one of the best teams. Correct. If now, not the that best. being said, I think that's important to know for everyone who is here in the chat that uh, we are currently only able to watch one lobby at a time since we can actively spectate it. So there are 200 or so players who are playing in the event right now. Which that is means great. up to three lobbies, uh, if not four. So yeah, so we've got plenty of, uh, of lobbies here to watch. So your favorite players may not be in every single lobby, but we will get them uh, on the screen as much as physically possible. Yes, we try and our best. And uh, uh, it's a great thing that so many players play the first uh, custom lobbies tournament in Realm Combat. It means like probably it will make more players uh, try game again, you know? I think that there will be a lot of people making a return to the game mm -hmm. with cash prizes on the line as well as custom competitive lobbies. It is the best way to play Realm Royale right now. Yeah, it's the best time to play Realm Royale also. <laughs> Uh, for the person who's talking about full screen, this is actually just the way our overlays are currently set up because of the old way we had to spectate, and we don't have new overlays set up right now. So, uh, theoretically, this is just kind of the, the way we have our screen set up, because we used to have to do a display capture and uh, pull up everyone's Twitch channels on a browser. What so I think we'll probably rework the overlays and get those set up for uh, for the next tournament here so you guys can see them on a little bit of a bigger screen. Let's see if you're the only one warrior in the lobby. Because I may very well be the only warrior in the lobby. <laughs> I'm just checking right now, trying to find Aaron Days, and I don't see a single warrior. Right, looks like Aaron Days are going to be landing Waterfall, which is a great spot to land, actually. As far as looking at the leaderboards go, yes, as we are landing here, we will take a look at the leaderboards as they update. They hadn't updated for round one yet, so as soon as we get them updated, I will be giving them to you, and you guys can check out where everyone stands. Yeah, Aaron Days uh, landed Waterfall, which is uh, super risky, And but, you know, when you're Aaron Days, you can do those moves. So... The problem of uh, Waterfall, you can be locked by the team that landed uh, near the Jade Garden. If you have a bad loot, you will not escape. But it seems like it will be pretty... Cutting over to an early fight here. Mr. 2000 and Endel O are currently in a fight right outside of crossing both players have a slug rifle they're trying to get as much health as they can you can see some abilities roaming around here picking up a purple arbalist though. it's oh, arbalist. Right, arbalist yeah yep, but the problem is i'm not right. sure if he have the build for uh arbalist and without arbalist uh, build it's not very good weapon that's true, though I would say it's probably better, at least at this point in time, than a Grey Slug. But that's yes. the goal of Chaos ripping through both of them. A very effective ability inside those buildings. They yes. are going to run. You can see someone jumping behind there. He's going to use the Skull of Chaos, try and knock him off, and does not manage to dismount them. Now, there was a minor change that was made on this last patch. It does take a little bit more damage to knock somebody off of a mount. What do you think of that change, Deathmatch? Oh, I, I I need more time to realize if it's good or bad. I mean, like, uh, some changes uh, always will be f bad in the beginning, you know, but maybe it's not that bad. So we, we need, like we need more time. Looks will go down here. And as he does so, we'll hop on over to Red Grim here, who is already chicken. His, his other duo, Medical, is already gone as well, and they will both be eliminated by Dr. Tepper and Sunstorm there. Beautiful work by them. Picking up four kills for the team so far. I do, think, also ooh, here. I do think it's a very interesting change uh, that some of the hit scan weapons can't knock them off as much. But we are in the action again. Arrow and Daze here, knocked down to about half health, but they will get a single chicken. You can see the other hunter immediately running around trying to protect his friend. A ghost walk used by Daze, taking some damage, but he'll get a second chicken. There is the first elimination of the duo arrow down to 36 HP. That was a close fight. But they only killed one Techno Junkie. Uh, another guy escaped. That is correct, but they will take the advantage time that they have at the forge to heal back up. The other person's probably going to be licking their wounds at this point in time. Uh, arrow have headshot rune and crossbow is very huge. Uh, the best rune for him. He's actually, it's uh, surprising uh, to see that Aero Q 
execute playing uh, Longbow. He's the best Longbow Hunter in the game. One of the... Well, he and Shorty Cat are probably the best Longbow Hunters in the game. Uh, and he switched to Crossbow because, yeah, Crossbow build is just too good for duos. And they is playing Assassin instead of Warrior. Because nobody play Warrior nowadays. Yeah, it's unfortunate to see Warrior becoming uh, the least popular class at the moment, which, all things considered, even with the axe changes, I think the axe is, is still a very interesting weapon, but a lot of people, I guess, are not considering it competitive right now. Mm, I don't think it's interesting. <laughs> the, prob <laughs> the, problem, the problem is uh, the hammer is bad, so uh, and sword is not that good, so it's not only about the axe got nerfed. Uh, there is no other way to play warrior and for example hunter can be played with longbow with crossbow or even with arbalest and assassin can be played with sniper rifle or elrum or even shredder you know so and mage can be think played with, of yes? the the heirloom nerfs how how badly do you think that affected that weapon or do you think it's still one of the best weapons in the game it's a, the best weapon in the game Still hands down. <laughs> and bolt 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 stuff uh elrum sniper rifle Crossbow, the best weapons in the game right now. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think that's probably a, a pretty solid tier list there. We are currently down to 45 players. See Oni, Light, and Ronberg on the screen right now. They have one kill to their name, and they are rocking a, a purple crossbow, and that's about it as far as their gear is Nay and Street is in, in the middle of the fight right now. It's a big fight for them, and the, the thing is, uh, the team they're fighting against can be locked by the zone. Which which person are you looking at right now? Nai and Street. It's in the uh, they are in the beginning of the players list. They still fighting. Got it. Yep. Yep. All right, good. Hopping over that action. Yeah, I agree with the zone closing in. Although there's still a minute forty-five, so. That's a long time for maneuvering and repositioning. You can see uh, Strid there catching a shot off of his side. He's going to use that flare to try to get vision. And both he will... have very bad loot. They do, yeah. Just a gray slug, best weapon they've got right now. And rocking a, a gold hidden, but still not the best of uh, hunter abilities. It looks like both teams did not, didn't forge, so they just they landed in the cover place. Damage. Though Nia is taking more damage, see Strid is forced into a left peak position, which is not where you want to be. His teammate's going to be chickened, he's going to try and get away, but there is no way he's getting out of that fight. However, Strid will counter with a trigger of his own, he will get a direct hit killed. Nia will also go down, it is a 1v1 fight, is that a gold crossbow? It is, it's a fire crossbow he just picked up. What a huge advantage, can he capitalize on that? Yeah, so both uh, lost uh, their teammates. And also zone is coming, so... It's bad fight for both of teams. I agree. I think no matter what, they're not going to be in a good position later in the game. But I do think this trade can probably pick up this kill, especially with a fire crossbow just dropping into his lap. You need to start rotate because of the zona. He's going to go ahead and use that hidden, get better positioning on that assassin. You can see a gatekeeper <laughs> popping out here. We're going to move on over as we continue to see their fight. I have to remember not to click on the screen, because as soon as I do that, it immediately translates over to someone else. He will pick up that kill there on Goldie with the Fire Crossbow. Fantastic work overall, but he is going to be taking zone damage with no pots. Perplex uh, is fighting right now. And uh, Kolebins and Rune is locking someone in the zone. Let's see who is it. It's probably... No, no, it's not the team that we watched. Somebody you else. See Oni Light has just taken someone out with a fire crossbow here. It looks like that team inside the outpost is in the zone. So I think they're going to be okay right there. You hear the sore activated to go grab some of that loot. They will dodge the shots. Sensor drone coming out again. Really great blast there to knock him out of position there. I think uh, they're gonna die because Rune and Clans will not, not, not let this team in that bad position to stay alive. The question is, how long can they waste their time? Runa is deciding that not any more time he is going to go ahead and push it. And as far as you can level. see that he's pushing alone and Clemens is playing like... Backup support there backup on top support, of the hill. Yeah. 
A lot of damage going down there. Runa has lost his armor, but he's putting some great right peak shots. A 1,200 damage from that heirloom rifle. Kalemans decide to go with Runa now, so... Yeah, he's going to push up on the other side. They've now got them pincered. Runa's going to push it, but he is chickened. Can he get out of this no, fight? No, no, no. Kalemans is going to win the fight. <laughs> great fight, Coleman's by the way. We'll get it. Knock down low there, Coleman's will take out Dr. Tepper as well. It's fun to see now when your teammate helps you while being chicken. It is very interesting to see the assist play. Runa very aggressive there with that chicken. Not terrified of dying at all. So it's four kills for them, not bad. Uh, they took away two teams. I'm cycling through the teams right now. Aaron Days in Sentinel. It's quite interesting because I I remember probably Mouse was yeah Mouse and he, uh, uh we have to w watch no 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 Aero, they they skip Sentinel they go uh to Autumn Fields now and Perplex Perplex and Sentinel yeah the Sentinel it's like True Warrior Gaming here will kill TTV the real base on your your Beast Nation on your guys' kill feed there as the crow flies will the also question get is uh, kill feed. did True Warrior play Warrior. I don't think so. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> something something tells me there's not a single warrior amongst no, everyone. There was only you, but you in the water in the beginning of the game. <laughs> oh, I found the warrior. It's Toker. We do have war one warrior? Yes, we do have one warrior. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, you know, when True Warrior Gaming isn't playing warrior, <laughs> then you know that's when things are... Yeah, uh, True Warrior playing assassin. So. <laughs> so the real True Warrior is Toker. Speaking of uh, True Warrior here, checking in on him and as the crow flies, they are just barely keeping ahead of the zone as it closes in with 21 players remaining here. Uh, True Warrior have very good loot, to be honest. Runa just uh, killed Gali, so they fighting against Cripple Team, and Runa killed Crippler, so it's already six kills for Runa's team. Very good game for them, and it's second good game for them because they were pretty good in the first game. So it looks like they doing great out of two rounds. Aaron and Days staying in autumn, pretty safe. Okay, so Aaron and Days have great loot. Days have Golden Slack and Golden Ale Room. They both have armor. So, and they have good position in the zone already. So they're looking very good in this round. Alrighty, Deathmatch, just so you know, I went ahead and restarted the stream. Okay. Uh, just someone said that our delay wasn't as long as the tournament delay, which is weird because it was set to three minutes. So I just put it at, at like four just to make sure that nobody can use us to stream snipe. Okay. It's uh, it's very important to not let anyone stream snipe because, you know, it's a big advantage. So. Exactly. Yeah, I would hate to give anyone uh some sort of advantage over that sort of a thing. Aaron is in a bad position right now. They uh, Aero got sniped, and the enemies have high ground. They have very good loot, but not very good runes. Looks like Days will catch a shot there on the side. They're both a little low and no armor potions their name either. Yeah, but there is a... Who are they fighting against? Someone uh, up Sneaky got in the top of the hill. Yep, you're right. European Sneaky players. Got in there, and they are pushing through the barn right now. 
Now they've also got some pretty good loot to their name. This is going to be a tough fight for Arrow and Days. So Lear is from uh, United Kingdom and Stinky Gut is from Germany. So it's also a new team. Uh, Great I mean, work sniping that proximity mine there by Lear. Other teams Arrow, unfortunately, will... rocking a green prox mine. That's a long cooldown on that. Yeah, I, I think he runs Ranger. I don't think he runs the uh, talent for prox uh, five seconds slow. Oh, they decide to push. This is actually pushing. Yep, here they come. Days and Arrow getting ready. The prox trap goes out. Arrow hit by the conk bomb. Knocks about a fifth of his HP. That's oh, that. Days gets cracked by a sniper. And they are too. They will be pushed oh, right now, I think. Push. Get ready. Here no, 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 Dave they don't. They scared. They scared. Because of uh, third party, I think. So they I don't wonder, push. Yeah. I wonder if they also might know who they're fighting right now. Yeah. They still want to be careful taking that fight, even at low HP. I don't understand why Days and Arrow still want to push them. I'm after. not sure either. Days is going to take another snipe to the torso here. Drop down. He's only got one potion left. Maybe they feel like they're in a good position to win the game if they can get these two kills. But there's a snipe again. Days down to about one quarter HP. Arrow as well. And they are running out of pots. Days has no healing left. But you can hear a third party. Our Lear, Lear is chicken. Lear got yes. hit by a third party. He's having to move out. So Days and Arrow wanted to take this barn so much. So they were like, we have to push. Even Very after all those interesting snipers. fight. I can't believe they got out because of that third party there. But Lear and Sneaky God are going to back out, having recovered and drop at the forge. So they're going to have a health and armor as well as a huge forge advantage over Arrow and Days here. I will be surprised if Days and Arrow right now will push forge. I mean, like, yeah, they will try to get the pass because they don't have pass anymore. But right. I don't know. It looks like it can be suicidal. So I don't know. If it's a good you idea to push. Countdowns there. Days is looking. He throws a conk bomb up into the window, but the timers are running out. Lear is going to drop down and pick up his item, so he will now have ten pots, and he'll be in a much better position to take uh, any future fights. Smells a purple heirloom. He's he's rocking a good equipment setup. Onyelight and Romberg already sitting in the zone in the house. It's very good for them, and they have six kills. It means they took away. Uh, three teams, so they're looking good too. Yeah, very interesting uh, playing for position at this point in time. Now, again, positioning doesn't give you that many points, but it certainly does help. Uh, every single place that you get from top 10 upwards will give you an extra point. So sometimes going for that position here in the late game can be a great way to pick up the free points that you couldn't get by getting kills. Arrow is going to get chicken, and so will Daze. He's going to catch a snipe shot and try and charge, but he'll get caught out by Lear. It was great snipes by Lear. It was. Those were fantastic snipes. And it looks like uh, Arrow will also go down to Fortnite God here on the other side. So that is the full team eliminated. We are down to seven. Onyelite and Romberg. Looks like they can win this game because they have full armor. They have great loot. They have great position. So everything is looking good for them. It is definitely the best position, I think, out of the team so far. I run right into a fight here. Perplex Ghost manages to pick up a kill on Fortnite God. He's going to go ahead and soar out here fairly low. He's fighting Lear as well. Perplex Ghost is going to take a snipe shot as well. That's if I have to bet it. for any team right now, because it's three teams left, I will bet everything on uh, Romberg and Onyelite, because uh, Lear and Sticky God fighting against Perplex team and losing all their armor. They have no health. Uh, and some really Onyelite and Rombic just chilling, you know? From Nefira there. Like, yeah. that was fantastic. I'm surprised he didn't take more damage. He does get up on the floofy bounder, though, and take a headshot snipe. That's not the thing you want to have. Rombic and Onyelite starting movement, and they have now great position on both teams. There is no chance for Rombic and Onyelite to lose uh, this game. I mean, like, they have best position already in the zone. They have full armor. They have good loot. I don't see them losing they are, it. They are going to have to be careful, though. Lear's snipe has been very on point, and sometimes that can turn the tide, especially in a longer range fight like this. Yeah, but uh, Lear and um, Sigurd, they have to move towards uh, Onyelite and uh, uh, Ronberg, and they that don't even true. have armor. Looks like they begin to move. Nefira will dodge a snipe shot. Great work dodging there. Use the last armor potion as well, and we'll pop the sword to try to escape. 
No damage so far. Ghost playing cover fire there with that sniper rifle will manage to hit a shot on Lear and Sneaky God. It's interesting Force how patient, uh, how patient Only Light and Ronmerk. They don't even trying to peek. Yeah, it looks like they're still playing the cautious fight here. Now, Ronberg is down to about one-fifth armor with a couple of pots remaining. Ronberg is getting a little bit of visibility peaks. They are in the zone right now, which is a good place to be in. You can see those shots firing out. All three teams are now in a small engagement with each other. Looks like Lear and Sneaky God might just be waiting for the zone to come in. That means they have traded opponents here. Nefira and Ghost are now fighting against Oni Light and Ronberg. Yes, yeah, the, the problem of Oni Light and Ronberg right now is that both teams want to push their spot from mm, two sides, which is very bad for them, so... Right, uh, they did not do a good job rotating yeah. the other teams into each other. Now they're yeah. kind of stuck in a bad fight situation. Yeah, it's actually a big mistake that they were so passive in this uh, fight. Now they pinched and, yeah, they're probably gonna the lose coming it. in here, Lear is gonna go ahead and land a shot. You can hear a chicken coming out as well. They begin to heal back up using the healing station, but everyone knows this is the time to push in. Lear will kill Ronberg, so that rotational arrow error It's crazy, will absolutely crazy that uh, uh, it happened like this. I mean, like, everything was in uh, Oni Lights and Ronberg hands, but somehow they lost it. Yeah, but unfortunately, a rotational mistake can make a huge difference with great players like this. Oni Light will kill Perplex Ghost with a fire crossbow, though. We are in multiple fights here, but Sneaky God and Lear are the only surviving full duo that puts them in a great spot. You so. see them moving out here. They are beginning the rotation. Shots firing all over the place. They're in a third party, and that's going to be the capitalization. Sneaky God and Lear will pick up both kills and the game. And there it is. They will take first place in game number two. Yeah, and uh, the funny thing that uh, Nifira went for the second place to get more points, and he chickened on your light, but... Uh, Lear and Sneaky God finished him before they finished Oni Light, so Oni Light will Which take I this think, game. honestly, is the better play uh, to just go for the kill, because you're going to get that point no matter what, right? It's one point either way, so if you can capitalize on getting the kill by the end of the game there, then you are still in the best spot. If he feels that he have no chance to win against this duo, and he have no armor and health, it's it was a good uh, way to try to at least take second place and one more kill. But a fantastic game number two there. You know, it's always so interesting, right? Someone can have all of the gear, all of the things, but a single mistake can cause some serious problems for them. But nonetheless, a top three finish is still a really great spot to be in at the end of the day. I agree. And so it's it looks like who is doing great out of two rounds... I'm going to go ahead and pull up the scoreboard here, see if I can get it to load and I'm not sure if form. any team was, like, top three for both rounds. Yeah, yeah probably it will take us page. some time to... Yeah, unfortunately for us, it looks like the scoreboard and stats page is still just in a spinny wheel, so uh, we do not have... Any stats to give you guys uh, as of yet, but we will uh, we'll get them there as soon as we can. I'll see. Maybe I can get a hold of Potato here and see if uh, if that's just a problem on our end or if maybe that is. Uh, no, that is I see in the chat people asking, so probably it's a problem for. Yeah, it looks like looks like the scoreboard is not loading uh, for everyone who is currently in the chat. So we'll uh, we'll see if we can get that going for you guys as soon as we possibly can. But. Heading back in here at the end of game two, if you just had to take a guess off the two games that we've seen. Who do you think is is really making a push for first place right now? Uh, Rune and Clemens probably have pretty good, decent two rounds. And might be... Lear and Sneaky God, probably. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's after, after that, that game number two there, uh, I mean, they came out of that with, what, like five or six kills, I think, by the end of it, uh, plus the first place finish. So that was a very, very good round for them, for sure. Oh, wait, Perplex, they have two second place. So they probably on the first place right now. That I'm... is a good point. Two second place finishes. Although, again, kills do make a huge difference. So that's something that we're really looking at. They had some kills. They had six kills in first game and six True. kills in se second game. So they finished, uh, in yeah, both uh, games, six kills and both games second place. It's very good result. 
For those of you who are coming into us right now, we are currently hanging out. Uh, this is Deathmatch and Mr. Wolf. We are waiting for the scoreboards to update here so we can give you guys the uh, the perfect viewing experience here. I'm going to see if there are uh, possibly any errors that could be solved. I'm checking go ahead Trigger. And... Definitely Perplex must be on first place right now. If nothing super huge happened in another lab, it's like 20 kills, you know? Right, because, yeah, we never know if, uh, if another lobby here might be a little bit a little bit more intense or a little higher kill games. But definitely, I think, out of our, our lobby number ones here, that's where we are going. So we're going to go ahead and jump over into the, the Discord chat here for the pregame. And uh, I'll see if I can figure out a way to get these scoreboards up and running for all of you guys. Fantastic game so far. Yeah, are we uh, all done? Your lobby's done? Yep, our lobby is done. Cool. So my lobby's still going. Okay. Now it does appear um, that the scoreboard is not loading for, I think, just about everybody. Correct. Yeah, I, was, I, I don't know if you were there for the rules, but I told everybody that uh, all of their DMs were preventing me from working on the scoreboard, and if they oh, wanted okay. me to get the scoreboard done to stop DMing <laughs> me, and then I got about 60 more DMs. So, right, sounds about right. Uh, yeah, still still working on that, getting going, but as soon as I get that up and running, I will advise you and let you know. Perfect. Um, the problem here is obviously that the, once the registration is closed is when I started doing the scoreboard, because all that's when the teams are final. But uh, since there's about 60 teams that either didn't show up or don't know how to show up, I don't know. Um, you know, that's 60 extra people in time and all that. So um, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, it'll get going here shortly. That's no problem. We'll, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and get the next lobby going for game three. Perfect. And, and uh, I, I will eagerly game. await your DM. All right. All right, guys. So again, game number three is going to be on North American. So please go ahead and swap your preferred region over to NA uh, and I'm here was also listening to all right we are we're back deathmatch so uh, from what I understand looks like that the uh, the scoreboards here uh, didn't get worked on because we had so many coordination things to get to get figured out so uh, we, we have to wait for potato to get everything all set away but we should be good to go yeah and it's very interesting to see the points I mean like uh... The problem is we have three lobbies, right? Uh, so we right. don't know what happens in the games we didn't see because both games we saw we had Perplex team, which is Ghost and Nefira, uh, and they look out of our lobbies. They definitely look like a best team right now. Yes, for sure. Yeah, it's it's tough though when we don't know what's going on with the other lobbies. Yeah. Uh, to catch up with Twitch chat here, uh, Doctor Tepper. So Octo is currently on vacation. We're hoping that he can come and join us again on the desk at some point, at some time very it's soon. Not a vacation. But it's a long trip. <laughs> That's true. It's a, yeah. It, it doesn't really count as a vacation when it's a year long, does yeah. it? That is yeah. that is a it, a long engagement for sure. I think he went for one year trip. So. But uh, in any case, he, he is gone. Hopefully at some point in time, we'll be able to get him to, to come guest with us back on the desk again, because uh, we love having Octo. He's, he's always been amazing. But I am really, uh, really happy to have you here, Deathmatch. It's uh, been fantastic to have you so far today. Yeah, thank you so much. And it's a great opportunity to guest with you. Both of, of course. <laughs> It's, it's great because uh, you've got such a wonderful familiarity with all the EU teams. And I think it's so great to, to get Not that. Not only you. I also <laughs> <laughs> know everyone on the knee <laughs> because that I play both true. servers. Yeah. So. You do play all over, don't you? Yeah. The reason why I know both NA and EU players is because I'm from Russia, you know, so I'm not, not, not from <laughs> both, you know, so I'm like in the middle. <laughs> You know, thank you all so very much, everyone who is currently here in the chat, who, who's watching the games be played right now, who's, who's streaming it themselves or participating, whatever it may be. Thank you all for hanging out. Uh, we appreciate this so much. Uh, without you guys being here, watching these channels, stuff like this, competitive realm would not exist. So thank you very much. Uh, we will do our absolute best that we possibly can with casting. Uh, one last update here for anyone who might just be joining us. Uh, the scoreboard is still offline and not updated. So we do not have any scores for game one or game two. We are about to head into game number three right now. So I just want to let all of you all know that that is currently the situation. And as soon as I do have a scoreboard, I will be giving you guys a scoreboard update. We just have to wait for that to happen. 
Yeah, and the great thing about this tournament, we can see that so many teams had reshuffles, and it's uh, great to see new duos, you know. I'm excited to see how Alternate and Shrudel will uh, do as far as I know, Alternate won the solo league in A, and Shrudel came second place. So this is seems like they right now the best solo players from NA, and they play together now. Heavenly playing with uh, Mouse, which is also great team. Uh, so it's so many great teams that started from this tournament. Yeah, it's it's very fascinating. There there are a lot of uh, I think for people who have been keeping up with competitive realm for a while now, there are a lot of iconic duos that are not currently participating as a duo together. They've split up and found new partners. And it, it's very interesting to see how those those teams are going to gel and, and see where those things end up, you know? Yeah, and some teams uh, not playing this tournament, some great players, the Cute Realm, unfortunately. For example, Ryzen and Gentle Giant is not playing this tournament. Maybe they will watch this uh, tournament and they will be jealous and they will say, we have to come back, we have to try one more time. Because I think that's Customs exactly is here. what is going to happen. Because yeah. this has been the most fascinating and action-packed competitive realm I've ever seen. Uh, yeah. Having custom lobbies like this makes a huge difference for tournament play. That's true. All right, going over the playlist here, looks like we've got some some great people. We got Filer as a solo back in our game here. We've got Shrudel and Alternate again. Uh, Whitehammer is going to be in here as well. Uh, the Smash duo, as well as Lear and Sneaky God again. Munch and Baggins, Oni Light, Ronberg, Idiot Mouse and Heavenly, Lalahu and Reed. Fortnite God. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of the same duos here. Where is Stacked Lobby? Where is Stacked Lobby? Indeed. Yeah, this is about as stacked as you can possibly get here. I can also, see almost got, uh, all the best teams here, to be honest. We've got Mr. Bako Bako, a player that uh, is also very high skill, who we haven't seen in one of these lobbies yet. Uh, Runa and Coleman's are in here as well. Farbro Bob. All sorts of incredible, wonderful high skill players here. Yes. Gonna be another great game for sure. And also Hasaya in this uh, lobby, so... <laughs> Must be... Who, who were all really Legendary Zeppelin. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to jump right into the water. <laughs> all right, and here we go. We have seven seconds left. Uh, again, as far as tournament organizing and those sorts of things go, uh, make sure you guys are contacting Potato if you're having any issues whatsoever. Uh, to help get that sorted out. But again, the more issues he has to solve, the longer it'll take to get the scoreboard up. Uh, but, you know, that is what it is. We've got to play that sort of stuff. So we will figure it out. But thank you all for stopping by. Uh, as soon as uh, my warrior here drops into the water, which is about all a warrior is useful for in this patch. Talker, we will talker, play warrior. <laughs> no! Okay. People still flying. Uh... I'm watching Duck Core and MZ. They in the fungal. Here it goes. I'm watching uh, Frost Wolf and Wreck, who are currently landing right now. Coleman's and Rune in Lumberfall, and there is another team in Lumberfall. I'm sure they have to fight soon. So they're finally about to have some competition yeah. here in Lumberfall. It's been a dead drop all day, but they're going to have yeah. a little bit to. Uh, There's There was a team a in a barn. Now, I do believe, for those of you who are asking right now, I think each lobby is first come, first serve as soon as the lobbies are available. But again, this is our first custom lobbies tournament. So uh, if, if we end up with consistent stacking or something like that, then we'll uh, we'll have to adjust. I think in future, in future, if we will develop our competitive scene in Realm, probably we will have uh, leaks. I mean, like the, you know, like uh, the tires for players, if they have will have ratings or something like this. So, uh, for example, there will be Realm Comp for top tire for middle tire and for new players something like this right maybe in the future because right now we cannot make a proper ra ranking because uh, it's the first right uh, we just haven't had a tournament. competitive season really yeah and uh, whoa it's gonna be a fight. really quick sorry to yeah. interrupt here but heavenly and idiot mouse i go over to them to check in how they're doing and they are getting eliminated both of them have been taken out by fortnite god and techno junkie they are it's out of crazy. this match with zero kills and Rune Klem is taking high ground on Lumberfall against the team that's forging right now. It's gonna be a fight. 
Checking in here, Runa and Coleman, as you can see there, up on Heaven right now, one of the uh, the shorthand terms for this uh, this beautiful little section here that gives you line of sight over the Forge. But a smart rotation by the other team to move around, that interior structure there forces you to rotate off of the high ground. It's a really smart rotation to get over there. Yeah, but Runa is dismounting the uh, enemy's team. And Indeed, looks like they've taken cover inside that house. Another 400 damage from Coleman's as they begin to push in. The problem is this team already have loot, but Runa and Clemens, they're not scared. They want to fight. Yeah, they, are, they are pushing like they have legendary loot and full armor yeah. right now. I mean, go ahead and I know Runa very good. Stairs. He made a call that if these guys run away, they are not very good players, so they have to push for sure. You can hear the chicken there has been popped. I think they might have actually popped both chickens. Runa and Coleman's are going for the kills. Runa will get one of them. Beaver Hole will go down. Another one hiding behind the tree there. They're trying to get their best angle on it that they can. Coleman's firing again. I think they might actually get the res off here, and they may be experiencing some side action here. They took a soul gust, it looks like, off the side there. Coleman's again firing down. They are indeed, looks like they're getting third party here by another duo. Coleman's will take some damage. Firing the bows out. Skull of Chaos goes in, but they will catch a bow shot for that Skull of Chaos. So they only killed one guy, and another team came, and now they're playing more passive. I think as they should be. Again, they do not have the best loot, though they did get a couple of good items here. Runa pushing. They're going to go for it anyway. Runa will immediately blink in on top here. The Skull of Chaos goes out, but they're going to get that chicken. And there it is. Runa will kill Reed with the revolver. That is their second kill. And uh, nice kill. shot by Galemans. Oh, that very was a good. fantastic very shot good. right there. Two very good longbow shots from Galemans and another chicken. Indeed, and with that chain, they're going to easily chase them down here. Now, with the new chicken jump mechanics, they were able to easily get up to that second story, but with a sore on your hunter, that's not going to keep you safe for very long. It was uh, Lalau and Reed. I believe both are from an A. Well, at they least are, uh, Lalau. Down. Yeah. This game is uh, Europe or NA? NA again. It was Europe yeah, before. Yes, this one is in yeah. NA. That is correct. Yeah. Game number three. We started in NA. Moving over to Farbro Bob here, uh, has lost his teammate Bri, but they've managed to get one elimination. Unfortunately, with only 49 shards and very crowded forges, that res is going to be really challenging to get off. Uh, Perplex, the duo here who was in our top three last game, has managed to pick up a kill on Zerk Zeus. Yeah, those, this team Perplex, they're doing very good. They are, they're performing very, very well. Checking in on Scully, Sean, and Hasa here. They are at zero kills over in the Lost Forge area. They're about to catapult onto Lost Forge. You can see the Forge is active. I don't know if they rotated away from their own Forge, or are they rotating on top of someone who is forging? It's uh, Hasa and Scully, Sean. Yep. And they're landing down right now. They're, uh... oh no. It's a bug. Scully, Sean, unable to land here. I think he might be stuck. Yeah, he bugged. Sokka died that to is, street. That is not good. I think he's stuck here, and Haas is going to be left without a teammate as he gets bolt staffed down. Baggins Five will Baggins. pick up an easy kill. Very oh, unfortunately for Hasa team that Skuli got stuck. Indeed, looks like Munch is going to go ahead and pick up that kill on Skuli Sean with the heirloom rifle here. Not able to capitalize on that push that they wanted to make. Unfortunate indeed. So many uh, new players in this tournament that I never uh, saw those na nicknames before, which is great. Yeah, it's great. It's wonderful to see both new players and I think very old players returning yeah. to see the competitive scene as it stands. I think it's really fantastic. I'm watching Gaero and Dace right now. They have zero kills and they always around Jade Garden. It looks like they keep dropping at... Probably Waterfall again. Jade Garden is one of my favorite drops as well. It's got a lot of loot and uh, tends to be a good place to pick up a quick couple of kills. But of course, that's in pubs. In competitive, those quick couple of kills are a lot harder to come by. Yeah, that's true. I hate Jade Garden drop, to be honest. And Do you, What's your favorite drop spot? It's crossing. Crossing? Crossing's yeah. a great spot. Yeah. Crossing or probably Trinity. On Viking, David, and FPGG, they're currently in a fight in Autumn Fields and pick up a quick kill on your daddy. You can see the Forge is active. They begin to rotate around here on that Forge. They're going to pick up those pots and uh, find themselves with three kills overall. Not too shabby for them. Uh, for everyone who's joining us in chat, a great hello to all of you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We're on a three-minute delay, so it's hard for us to keep up with chat 100%, but we'll do our best where we can. But thank you for joining us in on this action here. It's fantastic to finally get some custom lobby competitive realm, is it not? Yeah, it's such a great uh, moment for 
all the realm players we finally have a great tournament with custom lobbies and it's superb so far MX Zeta here uh, with one kill. Their partner has been eliminated. Lear over here as well. Sneaky God has been taken down. They're in Sentinel Hold. Actually, those two players very close to each other, I believe. Lear does have enough shards to go for the res inside of Sentinel Hold. We'll see if maybe he can get it There's off. two teams be... from a team called CMD. A team that one. I have not heard of before, so Me that's too. exciting. It looks like that red scroll will be popped. It's hard to tell because we can't see the uh, the countdown on our own screen, but I believe that is most likely a red scroll drop by Lear. So he's going to try and get Sneaky God back into the game here. Santa Claus, a solo player, caught into a fight by Daze and Arrow and quickly taken down. Arrow actually knocked pretty low by that engagement, but... Alternate and true fighting right now near Sentinel. And, and they have third party, so it's a problem for alternate and shuttle. We we're fighting uh, one they team, and there is right another team. They are in that sentinel hold area where we just saw uh, Sneaky God trying to get that res off as well. So there are a lot of teams hanging out in the sentinel hold area. Alternate and Shrudel moving around here. Let's see if we can find Shrudel. There he is. He's got the sniper out, and he is firing. I don't see any hit markers landed, though. He's going to grab the, uh, the shards off of that kill. Uh, a quick fire as well. They've got five kills total for them so far. Yeah, this team is very good. Okay, uh, so alternate is pushing alone the forge, and Lear there. Sticky got here. Oof, putting some serious fire down. Forced a sore out of the other player. They're trading some damage back and forth. Alternate will get the chicken though. He'll put some damage down with the blast arrow as well, and he will get the kill onto Sneaky God. And they will easily finish uh, Lear now. They will. Well, be truly, uh, he picks up Lear TV. With it's that impressive that rifle. they didn't finish alternate together. Lear and Sneaky God, they have time to finish alternate before Shrudel came. So It but... looks like they might have been separated just enough. They weren't able to collapse on that fight in time. Unfortunate for them. Yeah. Well, it looks like alternate and not Shrudel with some great rotational prowess. Not only pick up two kills, but they get out of that third party situation. Baggins uh, and Munch cards. is also in Sentinel, but they will not push Shrudel on alternate, I believe. They're playing passive. Alternate, uh, Arrow is down. His chicken, he just got killed by Arpel and Daze is alone. He locked in the valley. Let's see if he Daze will be... is taking some damage here. He's going to try for the quick scope. He will miss the quick scope, but puts some great revolver shots down. He will get the chicken. Oh my god, chicken away. trying to kill him. Oh, oh my... But unfortunately with the res, that forced him to maneuver away, and that puts him in some serious trouble, and that will be it. Arpel will take down Jeff Daze. Daze will be mad after this. He, he was about bet. to clutch it, but the he new chicken have, he mechanics. He could have had the double clutch if he could have pushed the chicken, yeah. but the other chicken attack there putting down too much damage. Yes. So it, on alternate now we see even a competitive it. level chicken uh, fights can help you. Emma, uh, I would truly well, yeah. be terrified of a pro chicken. I'm not going to lie. A pro <laughs> chicken sounds sounds horrifying to me. I thought uh, chicken man took by um, Octo, <laughs> you know, he's always <laughs> was, uh, saying that he's a chicken man, <laughs> but he's not Fire playing anymore. So. by himself in a tough third party scenario here. And he's gotten some good shots with the slug rifle, but he's taking shots on all angles. They're kind of fighting over the supply drop here on the map, but the zone is closing in and he's not in a good rotational spot either. Slug rifle shot going down on that long distance target, but a short range target right below him will immediately remount. Violet may go for the chicken Kalem drop here, but it looks like... already in uh, Jade. Looks like, unfortunately, Filer is going to be taking some storm damage here. I think maybe he's just trying to get a kill before he dies here. Oh, he's being forced into the zone by another team. There's 400 damage. They will miss the snipe. Headshot, four. He's one away. He will chicken him in the zone, but he's got a duo partner there to back him up. I don't know why this team is still fighting Filer, who's so... I don't know either. Yeah. Filer is clearly going for uh, for the game ruin here. That's CMD, the exact team you were just yeah. talking about here. Yeah. Filer's trying to ruin everybody's days here, playing as a solo. He picks up a kill by himself and then moves on on the rotation. Baggins TV, you can hear some action just outside. They are firing right now on another player who has moved inside. Baggins, Baggins is much here. Down to a bad health. But they are managing to stay safe so far. And there we go. Baggins will take down Nye with the Lightning Bolt Staff. Munch still at about half health. Baggins and Munch doing surprisingly very good in this tournament because they already have 9 kills. And as far as I remember, all the games before, they also 
did pretty good job. So probably they in top uh, list of uh, teams right now in ranking. I agree. Yeah, this is a very effective duo for the two of them. Yeah. A lot of kills so far. Interesting enough that the, their rotations here into Sentinel Hold have netted them so many kills. Filer will finally go down to LFT there. Did his best to ruin as many games as possible. You can see straight right outside of Sentinel Hold here. His, his duo partner has died, but he is still alive and holding. He's gonna try and rotate away as best he can. Checking out Serendipity and Shine here. They are in a fight right now. Pretty long range fight at that. You can see a barricade going down on the far end. Coleman's and Runa seven kills already, and they already in the great spot. They in the central part of the circle. In the house. Munch and Baggins getting some extra stuff. You're checking in on Runa and Coleman. You can see a sensor drone going down. Trying to find some vision on other people who are hanging around inside of this zone already. It Crouch looks like Baggins Clemens. and Munch and Rune and Clemens looks like they are favorites in this round. Yeah, so far, definitely the kill leads. Hoping to get for some extra positional points as well. Rune will top off on his last potion there. It looks like he's got full runes as well, which is a good spot to be in. Again, the Sentinel Drone not getting any vision from what I can tell. So they're going to move into this next house. They know they're in here. They're just not sure where yet. Yeah, they're starting Rune to fight. Rune and some fights. You gotta watch out for that Ice Staff. That AoE damage can be very tough in a window fight. Good damage down Push. on the top. He's gonna go ahead and Both have go blinks. for the aggro play. Great Carry teamwork. But if you notice, Runa took a bow shot to the back while he was taking that fight. The great thing about this uh, team chemistry, they both have blinks because they want to attack together, you know? Absolutely. You can hear Coleman's firing as well. Runa gets another chicken. He's gonna pick up another kill. And there it is, FPGG goes down to the crossbow damage. Already Nine a huge game for them. for them. Yes, already a huge game for them. Nine kills. And they're doing pretty good and consistent round after round. So they definitely also favorites for the winning the tournament. Checking on the rest of our teams who are still alive here. We have Merrick, Shrek, and Arpel are uh, both still alive. Two kills to their names. Uh, Brian Farbro, Bob with three kills total. You can see they're fighting someone who is currently cut off from the zone. A quick chicken... And there is nowhere for that chicken to run, but that crossbow is putting some damage down. They need to deal with that fast. Forcing the store out of Bry here. They need to pick up that chicken or do something. Bry is going to go down to a fire crossbow here, and that chicken is about to res. Going to go for the chicken charge into the open. A terrifying play as far as Bob will get chicken as well. They had that fight easy. Great conk. And pretty by hard, Serendipity will get Grade. that kill. Munch and Baggins have picked up another kill. They're at 10 so far both rocking gold snipers as well so they're in great position for long distance engagements i believe in the end it will be runa clemens against uh baggins and it may very well be Munch. i think baggins match gonna play very passive and they will start to rotate only when zone will start pushing them and runa is and clemens they already in the zone so they're playing very aggressive I, uh, now, watching more? Merrick and Arpel here, they are just outside the zone, but that third-party situation we just saw here, they are third-partying the third-party years, so they're they're moving in. They've got three kills to their name, taking these long-range shots. I don't know if they're putting down too much damage, though. It's hard to tell if these snipes are connecting. Blast Arrow will miss. Runa Long starting the fight crossbow. with... And he got sniped by the... There it goes. Yep, this is all one fight going on here from that hillside around. Mm. Runa taking some damage here, but Colvin's... Some insane slug shots, knocking other teammates very, very low here. Runa's going to give him some cover on top of the hill. There's a chicken at long range from Coleman's. That's four. That's 900 damage. Can he get the last shot on the chicken and pick it up? It doesn't look like he will. They're going to have to try and push, but they're taking shots from behind. Yeah. Maybe Baggins right there. Yeah, they, I was watching Baggins and um, Munch, and they were pretty passive, but in the end, they started to at least sniping those teams. So that is going to save a kill right there. Still nine players on the board. Watching Shine, he is back up. Uh, Serendipity is still alive as well. They try and find positioning. Whitehammer still hiding in a house. Got himself a crossbow out as well as that ice block. Now the ice block nerf, uh, interesting decision to, to play that there. We're gonna push Moving in here, Whitehammer. Who taking some damage. Forced to soar out. It may not be enough. He's going to try and land up on top. He will get chicken. Let's see if they will push it. Yeah, they will push for the kill. No, no. Runa, Runa made a call there. that 
They have to get back up. Yeah, that might be another team. Runa yeah. is going to end up getting that last hit on the kill. Barely picks it up in time. Beautiful play for them to kills, grab that extra 10 kills. Point. It's a very good game for them. Yeah, clearly Runa, Coleman's, and Baggin and, uh, and Munch here really dominating the lobby. Munch was knocked low, forced to use some of his potions. Here you can see a sensor drone has vision on them, so they're in a bit of a tough spot here. Serendipity and Shine are rotating in. They're taking some fire from the houses here. You see Munch and Baggins there as well. Runa giving some rotational trouble here. Yeah, so Runa and Kalimans already in the ending circle. I think they're going to they win are. this round. They're, they're getting some good third-party damage. Well, they've chickened someone, but I don't know if they can quite get to them. A minute 13 before the zone comes in. Serendipity will pick up the kill. He'll actually pick up a double kill right there. That's actually eight kills for this duo here. Serendipity and Shine. They're in a beautiful position in this late game. Yeah, but they also have a great loot. Uh, Grada have a legendary uh, slug rifle and legendary sniper rifle. This is a very interesting lobby here because we have eight kills, ten kills, and ten kills, I believe. So that's, uh, that's almost a third of the lobby here taken out by just these three duos. Four sniper rifles in the end. Can you believe that? So uh, only Runa and Colemans, they both don't have sniper rifle. Everyone else have legendary sniper rifle. So I think that that might actually be Runa and Coleman's favor, though. While, while snipers are great in close range if you're good with them, when playing against another pro team, it's very tough to hit those close range snipes. And as the zone gets closer and closer, I think Runa and Coleman's have the advantage here, especially because they don't have to rotate. Yeah. And Runa have legendary Frost Aileron, which is super good for them. Munch don't have it. And yeah, and uh, Grade don't have it too. So, uh, so Grade decided in sh this, I don't know, this player Shune. Uh, they decided to a little bit push Runa and Clemens. Yeah, it looks like a little conk bomb going through the window there. We'll catch both of them. Give them a little something to think about here. A quick snipe does miss. They barely connect with the wall there. Now, uh, unfortunately for them, they have to continue to rotate into the zone, and that's not a good spot to be in if they don't want to take damage. One second left Very on that Very good snipe by Shune. And it looks like they are inside the zone, which is a great spot to be in. Let's check it on Baggins here. They have also rotated into a building, so everyone, I believe, is inside the zone at this point. They're waiting to see what's going to happen here. Shine is going to wait for that zone to come in and then use the withdraw to get in. You can hear fire coming in from all sides as everyone is taking shots at each other. Runa and Coleman still inside the building trying to heal up. Runa have a passive. I don't know if that passive is going to come in too much. Push, the, push the from Runa. Is on us. Grada is chicken. Runa is dropping low, but the chickens are coming through here. They come back. Bag is decided to as well. third party. Runa and Coleman get taken down by Baggins and Munch. A perfect play. Two times I made a call who gonna win the lobby and two times I was not right. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that though, Baggins gets knocked low. Baggins is gonna get chicken here. Can Munch come in for the assist? He's moving in with that heirloom rifle. He's gonna try, but he is getting third party by the blink. He will get chickened as well. Munch will go down, but Baggins is still alive with one second left on his res. We're gonna have a 2v1 situation. Baggins with the skull of chaos and the legendary side is gonna go through the room. Whoa, here. great, go great push okay. by Baggins. Can Baggins pull off the 2v1 here? I don't think so. He moves up. If he can get this chicken and make it a 1v1, he's in a good spot. He's going to pop that reload and use the passive repair to his full extent. Skull of Chaos goes out but does not connect. Chicken is up and both have great loot, so I think they're going to finish Baggins. So we still are in a 2v1 scenario. The Blink and Conk Bomb connect, forcing the sore out of Baggins. He's taking some damage. Takes another crossbow shot through the slats in the wood, and that is a chicken by Baggins. And just like that, a couple of newcomers to the scene have managed to get the first place win. Congratulations to them. Yeah, they started the fight against uh, Rune and Clemens. They kind of lost that fight, but uh, Baggins and Munch were their savior. So they decided to third party Clemens and Rune. Uh, and it was great. Decision for this team, Grade and another guy. Don't remember the name. Very high kill count games from all three of those last uh, six there in final lobby of, of lobby number one there. I mean, overall, just some incredible action. I did not expect to have 30 kills 
out of three teams in any sort of competitive tournament. Insane. That is an insane amount of kills. Insane. And I'm watching this lobby right now. So it's looking like Arrow and Days not doing that good. Rear and Sticky got also. So this is the first uh, round when Perplex team didn't take a lot of points. They only had two kills and uh, 19th place. So far, it looks. I, I I believe that Rune and Clemens might be on the first place because they doing great all three rounds. I agree. Overall, they have done very very well. But I do think that Baggins uh, may very well be on top of them as well as Sneaky God's team. I think they've all performed very well in most of their games so far. Sneaky God uh, failed that last round, and they only had great round in second game. So good point. Good point. So uh, so they won one game. And it's that's probably all. What yeah. I do really enjoy about this format, though, is the fact that kills are going to make such a massive difference that, that if you drop a game in, say, 50th place and then come back with a 15 bomb, you, you've offset your points very drastically. And I like that a bad game doesn't necessarily knock you out of the tournament at this point. Yeah, and Baggins and Munch, yeah, they had so many kills in this game in the last one. For everyone who is just joining us, welcome in to the Realm Com Squad Squawk Downs cast. It is fantastic to have you all here. I am Mr. Wolf. It is wonderful to meet you all for the newcomers and the old comers. Uh, I'm your, your main caster for the day, and I'm joined on the desk by the incredible, exceptionally talented uh, streamer uh, and caster, Deathmatch TV. Deathmatch, what do you think of the tournament so far? It's amazing. Uh, it's such a great uh, thing that we we watching it, right? And... Uh, the customs, it's just the best thing that happened to Realm since the talent patch. So... Yep, I could not agree more. You know, not only for the competitive scene and what we get to see right now, because competitive uh, Realm, I think, is a great, uh, great developing scene, and seeing these custom games is fantastic, but I was also in some customs the other day where we were doing things like uh, prox mine only and, and snipe only. And, yeah, uh, it's, it's sword, great you know? for everything. Yeah, so customs is great yeah. for fun games, for competitive scene, for hard drops, for everything. It's just such a great thing that we finally have them. And the exactly. way they gave it to the community is great because everyone can host a custom game if he managed to find 24 friends, you know? So. Right, which which is great because it you know doesn't put too much uh, strain on the server, but also really gives plenty of people the opportunity to make a game. It's not impossible to get 24 people together and get a and lobby going. And it means going. we can make tournaments and even LAN events with this uh, uh, custom lobbies. Yep. It's amazing that, that high res has really handed the competitive scene over to us for now to really get high quality and fantastic tournament play. Yeah, I think it's uh, because of the new devs team and... I believe I agree. Jun the new Junko devs team has done everything in their power to, to make things point. incredible for us. So we have to all thank the new guys for this. Yeah. But honestly, I think just a big thanks overall to, to Hi Res uh, for, for really investing in this game, for Heroic Leap, for investing so much of their time and effort into making this game something that we all want to play and enjoy. Uh, to Hasa for, for funding this event and this competitive scene. And to everyone who's subbed to this channel, who's donated at any point in time, who's done anything that's contributed to these prize pools and making Competitive Realm what it is today. Yes. That's true. All right, so I do not have any word whatsoever for those of you who are interested as we've wrapped up the game. Um, in our scoreboard here, I do not believe that Mix has gotten those up. I don't have any DMs from him saying we have or not. So I, I think we're still working on getting those here. But uh, from what we've seen out of Lobby 1 so far, I think we, we do have a pretty good handle. I agree uh, with Runa and Coleman definitely being one of the front runners. I think that Baggins and Munch are probably some of the front runners as well. Uh, Lear may very well be up there somewhere around. I, I think it's still a fairly even field, but I do think those are some of our top players so far. Yeah, and uh, it will be fourth round right now, right? So That is correct. If in fourth round, uh, Coleman's and Runa still will be in top, they will be uh, or Baggins and Munch. It looked like they will be the biggest uh, uh, teams to win. I mean, like, uh, because... I don't see any other team doing really good. Yeah, I agree. I, the, at least not consistently over all three games so far. Now, of course, we are halfway through the tournament, so if someone begins playing consistently now, they still have plenty of opportunity to come back into this. I believe Mouse and Heavenly doing not that great. Alternate and Shudal, pretty decent, but not that great too. 
Uh, Aaron Days, not good at all. So, yeah, a lot of great teams uh, have not very good points right now, so... All right, so even though we don't have the scoreboard available for you, let's go over for everyone who is joining us the way the rules and scoring works for this tournament, give you all the information that you guys need to understand how this format is played overall. So our brackets match rules, we are a duo tournament. So we're playing in our, our duo format standard as far as that's concerned. Six rounds total are played. So we're about to start game number four out of six. These are all using custom lobbies. There are no bots, nothing like that. It is all completely real players all competing in the tournament. They are 50% NA, 50% EU. So we constantly trade. Whoops, sorry. Forget that I have a desktop catcher, catcher up. We are constantly playing, uh, switching back and forth between the two of those things. Go back to my rules and scoring here. Beautiful. There we go. All right. Uh, games will not be restarted. There are no substitutions, no cheating, stream sniping, or any third-party software or unsportsmanlike conduct of any kind. So the way this works uh, is basically they're going to be playing out their duos, and here's the way the placement and points work. Now, a Crown Royale gives you plus two points. So that's going to be the only time you get any bonus positive points. Second place is negative one. Third place is negative two. Fourth through sixth is negative three. Seventh through 10 is negative four. And 11 through 50th is negative five. So that means you're really looking for the top 10 to get any sort of placement whatsoever. Anything past that, you're looking at a negative five. You're getting two points per elimination. That is huge. Two points per kill means kills matter so much more than placement. Though placement can help make up for things you're really looking to play aggressively. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not sure that everyone uh, understands this because it's a new thing, right. new rules, and some teams play very passive, so probably they don't realize that rules changed, so, you know. Absolutely, right. Picking up two kills, uh, even if you're, say, going for either top 10 or two kills, you want to go for the two kills. Even if it gets you 11th place because of a third party, that's going to be more efficient for you than going for placement, and I think a lot of teams are playing more passively like they used to. Yes, it's uh, for sure. Uh, people need time to get used to the new scoring system for sure. But so far we see that Rune and Calamis play very aggressive. Uh, Baggins and Munch don't play that aggressive, but they still but take fights. They are fights. still picking up high kills. Yeah, but they, yeah, they still had uh, kills, so... Now, our overall prize pool for this event is $500 total. So first place is going to be splitting $350. Second place with 100 and third place with 50. However, all of them, the top three placements, will be getting an invitation to Hasa's 5K tournament finals. Now, all these cash tournament events that we are doing here also count as qualifiers for the 5K event. So if you're interested in earning some serious prize money playing Realm Royale, the 5K event is what you want to qualify for. That is the most important thing to be looking out for here. Sure. All righty, Deathmatch. I imagine we are probably just about ready to head on into our next game. I think the other lobbies have to be wrapping up at this point in time. So let me uh, let me check in with Mix here and make sure we can get ourselves uh, our lobby code and get in on our EU game four. Get in here, EU, custom games. Looks like I don't see it made yet, so that's okay. That means we can still hang out. Uh, chat, how are you all doing today? I hope you all are doing fantastic, and thank you for stopping by. Again, we don't have the scores up and running yet, as much as I would like them to be up and running. Uh, we're still waiting for the scoreboards to hop in here, so we don't have any stats from games one, two, or three posted yet. Those, those scores are tallied. They just aren't live on the website yet, so uh, so I don't have any information whatsoever as far as where I'm we go. I'm pretty sure that topic. even after tournament will end, we will not knew who won. I mean, like we we will need some time to realize because uh, right. perception already said that he have to uh, check all the teams because it's a automatic system and things like this. So I think we will have some time to wait yeah for... now again we do have a we have a decent rough idea i think overall of where people are, are placing uh filer is talking about uh Shrudel and an alternate having a, a huge amount of kills as well and two first place finishes for them so that's good uh looks like they're also in a really good uh standing so far so definitely a lot of our best teams uh whether they were in lobby one or two or three are definitely putting up some huge numbers so uh I'm so excited. it means like Shrudel and alternate won another lobby that we didn't See, Correct. because we've seen only one lobby that Shrudel won, and the last game they they got killed like 
Mm, I don't remember. I mean, Sentinel, I believe. Sorry, chat, one second. I'm uh, trying to find the countdown lobby, and it doesn't seem to exist for me. There we go. We got it. All right, I'm going to check in really quick on voice chat here and see see where we're at with getting started on game number four. on the desk welcome back deathmatch welcome back <laughs> so i the news that i have heard the good news is that uh the scoreboard is up and running it's just not updated yet so as soon as it gets updated with our scores we'll be able to check in and see exactly where everybody's placing so far yeah if it's uh true and alternate and true one two games they definitely must be on first place yeah, yeah they've got to be I, like the top three i think is very close to each other without knowing exactly how much people have placed in what matches but yeah uh, I agree. They've definitely got to be really close to first place at this point. This looks like a lobby just created, right? So yep, maybe... we are in our custom lobby for game four. So we're just waiting for the password to be released and then for us to get started. It's going to be Europe. Correct. Yep, we are in an EU game. It's interesting uh, the percentage of the teams, how many European players and how many NA players in this tournament. Yeah, uh, what do you think, just taking a, a rough glance from all the players that you know, what do you think the rough percentage is here, EU versus NA? I believe probably it's 60 to 40 for you right now, because, uh, uh, well, Europe have twice of population of an USA, so it's probably more European teams. I believe that is true. Given that you're, you're taking a very large region of the world and condensing it down to the one, the continent EU, essentially, uh, mm -hmm. that there's a lot more players there than just on, uh, on our U S servers. Yeah. The, the overall and a scene is more active. I believe uh, at least screams screams is way more active on an a, uh, to be fair. I think a lot of that has to do with time given that, uh, the, NA scrims were hosted by an NA person and in the evening. So I think just a lot of EU players don't have the ability to get on. Yes, for, for European players, it's uh, like uh, in the middle of the night. So not many of them playing it. Exactly. All right. So it looks like uh, we are currently taking a very short break. Uh, we're going to take a bathroom break here before we actually get things started. Um, so we'll hang out for that for a hot second here uh, before we get all of our scores updated. So I think... Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I might as well take the break. If we're going to get it, I'll put on a little bit of music here and we'll take a, a slight intermission. I agree. 
What, what kind of music do you want to put? Royal free? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's got some nice little royalty free yeah, music yeah, here yeah. that we don't have to worry about. Yes. Alrighty then. Uh, we will be back in just a couple of minutes, y'all. Thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with game number four in the Realmcom tournament. All right, my friend, are you ready? I am. All righty. Hello, everybody. Welcome back into the action. Fantastic to have you here. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, my name is Mr. Wolf. I am currently sharing the desk with Deathmatch TV, and we are heading into game number four of the $500 Realmcom tournament. Are you excited for game number four, Deathmatch? Oh, my God. So excited. I mean, like, uh, it looks like Alter and Shrudel, uh, Baggins, Munch. Uh, Runa, Kolemins, those teams looking forward to take the first place in the tournament. Let's see. Now, uh, as soon as we get loaded in here and I can move away from our uh, our 
game screen for a hot second here. I think the scores might actually be set up, um, but I'm not 100% sure because it also looks like the scoreboard still shows games like all the way up through game six. So I don't think this is actually correct. I think it's uh, we still need uh, to wait some time to... Or it's possible yeah, here sure. that it looks like uh, the scoreboard might still be for a squads tournament. Whereas uh, the individual leaderboards, I think, are actually updated for the tourney. But I will wait before, uh, for confirmation before we full on go there. But if this is indeed the case, then it looks like Leer and Sneaky, as well as, let me uh, check out the teams here, because I need to see who's part of what team. Uh, whoever is in already qualified lull is uh, is also tied for first place, which if I had to take a guess would be Runa and Coleman's. So I, th I think that might be our top two right now so far, which is kind of right about where we were thinking. So Runa and Coleman's and uh, Lear and Sneaky God. How many right, rounds? We, go. we got 19 seconds before the drop here. So let's, uh, let's get ourselves on into the game screen. Welcome in, everybody. Again, for everyone who is typing in chat, just so you all know, we are on a rather large delay to make sure that nobody can use our cast stream snipe. So I will get to chat as fast as I can, but it will be under a delay. So uh, I will do it, though it will be delayed when you guys do type. Uh, exactly what you all are doing right now. Exclamation mark scores in the chat will get you to the Realmcom hub right now. Uh, so you can take a look at that and see where the scoreboards place thus far. And here we go as you all get to watch me and my incredible pro gameplay as I drop directly into the ocean to die. We're about to lose uh, the only warrior in this lobby. <laughs> that is correct. I'm sticking with it though. I don't want to switch to assassin. <laughs> I feel like there needs to be at least one warrior in the lobby. Even if they just immediately go down. All right, uh, first people we are popping in on the lobby to take a look at here is Ghost and Nefira as they begin to drop in at Trinity Hills. There are some other players dropping right alongside them on the other side of the hill It looks like here. we are in pretty much new lobby to us because I'm seconding through the players so many new names. We didn't see them before. Yeah, we do have a few. Uh, Serendipity and Shine, uh, the top three. Uh, actually, the winner of our last lobby are still in here. Uh, Idiot Mouse and Heavenly are in here as well. Uh, Shrudel, you can see popping in as well. So Shrudel and Alternates. We do have some players here in this lobby, though. There are a lot of new names. Again, we have like two. Brandex and Moment here. is fighting right now. Who is fighting right now? Brandex and Moment. See if I can find. Here we go. Got it. Looks like they are knocked down to about one quarter and three quarters health apiece. Going to try and get some better guns than the shotgun. It is an unfortunate save for the shotgun when you're taking a gray burst over the purple shotgun. Another, another team in the house. They're trying to peek. Yeah, Brandox looks like he's going to pop those two armor potions here. Taking some corner peeks at the house. Nothing has landed yet, but they will get tagged twice. Not a good spot to be in. So maybe they, yeah, they decide to not take a fight. I believe. Which I think is a smart move. They're both very low and you're going to try and disengage, but they may get chased down here. They're not next to a forge either, so they're low on shards. It's not a particularly great spot for them to be starting here. Moving on through. Uh, hopping in on Eats, Bamboo, and Fox in Lost Forge here are taking a fight right now and taking a lot of damage as well. One yeah. of them will be chicken. It looks both like Eats, Bamboo, chickens. and Fox will both be chicken here. Fox gets taken down by Baggins, CTV. And with that last shot, there we go, Munch will take down Eats. Yeah, Bamboo. Munch and Buggins, they're always landing uh, Lost Forge as far as the... Yeah, Lost Forge see. appears to be their zone, and they are uh, eliminating anyone who dares try to challenge them as they... Shorty Cat uh, is chickened, and Kapski is about to be chickened, I believe. Moving in here, well, taking a look at Shorty Cat. You're right, Kapski is very low. We've got that little panda right now, making some beautiful, joyous noises, despite the fact that he might be eliminated here. He's getting Still pushed. Alive. Heroic leap away. Shorty will dodge some of the damage, but he has no potions to heal back up with. Kubski, I believe, is above him and firing down from below. So they might yeah. try to turn this fight here. Kubski is knocked low. Shielding yep. shout doesn't matter. Shroudy will be re-chickened. One chicken apiece by the sound of it, though. And no one's been I believe yet. I saw another team there. Ha! <laughs> Shroudy can't go for the aggressive play. He is going for the chicken pecs. He won't oh make it, God. unfortunately. For yeah, him. but there is another team. 
<laughs> there is Viking David comes in, eliminates Crippler at the exact same time. I'm gonna try and move back in here because it got me to another team. Uh, let's see. See if I can find Crippler here and get back in on the action. Viking David, there we go. Uh, Mau Mouse, Mouse died to Botarka and Heavenly is uh, without health alone, so probably he's We've got some die. major competitive players going down early in this yeah. particular game. Viking Dave and FPGG with three kills. That means I think one of the team members here did survive and get out to possibly fight another day. Checking in on Munchies and Sundavar. They are hanging out right outside of Crossing. They might have been that original engaged team. As you can see, no kills for them, so they seem to be doing just fine. Aaron Days in uh, Frozen Cemetery. They love this spot. It's their yeah. favorite one. That is one of their favorite drops mm. right there. I, uh, I always watch out whenever I know scrims are happening. I stay away from Frozen Cemetery <laughs> pretty much at all costs. Uh, Den 4 IQ and bot right now are at two kills total. It's actually funny. Uh, the Den 4 IQ is the Ukrainian player, and uh -huh. it means Denchik. So his really? name, yes, it, uh, his name means Denchik. His name is probably Denis. That's why. So fascinating. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's not Den 4 IQ. Thank you for the for the wonderful yeah. pronunciation and education. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> So. All right, Sneaky God and Lear here. They're at three kills, getting a nice forge in Northport. I think it should be easy for them. The reason why it uh, means Denchik because uh, Russian players use four as Che. che. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Because it looks like a Russian Che uh, letter. I'll be I'll be keeping an eye out for that from yeah. here on out. <laughs> Brandox and Moment uh, running into the zone. No encounters yet. They are close to somebody else here on the outside of crossing, but I don't know if they're going to end up in an engage there. Reed and Lalahu with five kills in Seaside Graveyard. That's an impressive early start for them. Our yeah. CMD duo here uh, with zero kills also moving up towards crossings. We have a lot of people right around this crossing. Heavenly is still here. alive without health and he ha have only 300 health. He's trying so to. So that was who managed to make it back out of that fight there was Heavenly. Yeah, he ran away from Trinity, I believe. And gotcha. I believe they had a fight against Colin Minston Runa. Uh, Dr. Tepper and Sunstorm, uh, they've got two kills apiece here. Yep, I can see Heavenly here on the main screen. He is without his partner, Idiot Mouse, and with no potions or regen to his name. The zone is also coming in, so I think even if he got enough shards, which he does have, I don't know if he could get a res off in Jade before the zone comes in. Yeah, that's that's tough right there. Plus, you can hear fire coming in on the offside of him, so he's going to have to move out of there. FPG Rudy just killed uh, Shorty Kid. And, yep, and then and Viking Cubsky, David yeah. gets uh, Cubski there. So let's uh, let's check in on them really quick. Let's see if maybe a fight is still going on here with Viking David. They are healing up as it stands right now. They're just go ahead and head into the zone with some extra shards. Their name so Heavenly is right over next to them, not in the best position. Shrewdrill and Alternate coming to Cold Mist right now, and Cold Mist uh, is forging. So maybe they will. Start to fight. They have good loot. So it looks like uh, Denchik. Did I get that correct? Denchik, yes. <laughs> Denchik and Bot are moving in. Uh, Trudel and Alternate fighting right area. now. Trudel and Alternate moving in to find them. They already killed Farber Bob, and they might go for the another fight in the Forge. After this fight, Got yes. It. Just finished Bree it, and Farber Bob and. The kill. Yeah, and they're ready to fight another team in in the Forge. Lear also taking down uh, Beast Nation there with a the slug rifle in your kill feed. They are moving straight into Cold Mist here. A great loot, by the way, for this uh, time for Shrewdle and Yeah, Altranus. I agree. Yeah, that, that, uh, that gold... Is that a crossbow or an arbalest there? Either way is going to be A crossbow great. for sure. Wait, let me check. Maybe, maybe it's from the Forge. Yeah, it is a crossbow. Yep, rock and fire crossbow mm -hmm. there. And they're going to move themselves around. Coleman's and Rune are also right next to the Cold Mist Forge here. So it's probably them was forging. 
Yep. Now, Ice Haven, Arrow, and Daze are next to a, a, a legendary chest here. They're actually, I think, baiting the legendary chest for kills because they're just circling around it near Ice Haven right now. Yeah, it's it's going to be alternate and Shrewdal. Two yep. big and a teams maybe will have a fight right now. Lear picking up two kills in the kill feed. You can see the catapult just landed. Yeah. Are they going to go for it? The chest is open. It's and another it team. It's, uh, There's another so team many there. teams. Sneaky Gun picks up a couple kills. They move into that building, and then we have got fire all over the place. Arrow is a laser beam with that crossbow, putting down some serious damage. First chicken gets popped. Jeff Day is at about half health, and every team in the game, it feels like, is currently right here at the Ice Haven Forge. Yeah, Arrow and the thing is, Arrow and Days will lose a lot of uh, armor against Petson and Steve, and uh, probably Shrudel and Alternate just will yep. finish them. Let's see. Unfortunately for them, they are taking the third party damage right now. Now, Daze does pick up one kill. That's three for them total. Moving in on another team here. Daze will pick up Steve with the heirloom rifle. Fantastic yeah. work there. But Munch So, Steve and Petson, the Swedish team, they got uh, killed by Aero and Daze. And Shrudel and Alternate decided not to push because they were probably waiting for a third I party think, or something like this. I think overall, probably a smart call to not push there and yeah. keep their high ground advantage. Yeah, they have very good but position. Days, oh, it looks like they are taking another fight. Shrudel takes a snipe shot down range. Does not connect with any of them before they blink back around the corner. A lot of teams congregating in this Ice Haven area. If I would be alternate and Shrudel in this situation, I would just stay in the Forge. Till the I would do, I agree. They've got great positional advantage. It locks everyone else out from the Forge as well, so they can't capitalize and get extra healing i think this is a good spot for them with that high ground they do have to be careful on a, a catapult push but that seems unlikely given the action that's going around right now i actually really think that this forge right now is the easiest forge to defend i agree you have fantastic positioning to get up on top of it now if i'm in a public lobby there are cases where i will use the catapults to immediately push in and get the surprise on somebody but, but yeah. that's really the only way to get the drop yeah, but in uh, competitive uh, lobby, it will be hard to, uh, you know, like uh, drop one by one on a good team on top. Exactly. So. FPGG on the south side of Cold Mist Village is pushing up. Viking David has been eliminated. Uh, you saw someone maybe just barely down at the bottom of the screen there with FPGG. But he's going to be avoiding Take a look fight. at what Clemens and Rune are doing right now. So they probably think that zone will end here let's see if they are right because runa knows zones very good and they just sitting right in the probably ending zone let's see right yeah we've got uh, 11 10, 10 seconds, seconds here yeah. before the zone closes off completely and uh, they're kind of rotating towards these houses here by ice haven now that's a very busy spot a lot of people have been up in this ice haven area but they've got good position on these hills so yeah and there yeah. they go they do get the zone yeah and now they just need to decide where to go. I mean, like, where to sit, what house. Right, which is a tough decision. There are a lot of teams rotating around here. They might end up in the wrong house, but they do have very good positional knowledge. They should be in an okay spot. And they're doing very good overall in the tournament, And they, but they don't have kills in this game. That's the problem for them. Right, yeah, so far this has been a lower play game for them. And again, since positioning doesn't matter near as much, that's going to be tough. All right, yeah. uh, let's see. Baggins and Munch here, they've got four kills. So, again, they're playing pretty well. Uh, four kills may not be an exceptionally high average, but uh, it's certainly better than zero and are still in the game. Checking in on Frostwolf and Wreck. They've got two kills to their name. They're hanging out on the south side of Cold Mist, up on top of a rock, just kind of chilling. I'm watching Trying Days the and the Arrow. They game. actually, they all... Starting the fight right now. They're pushing the force. You are right. And here it goes. The fight is active. Arrow and Daze are putting some damage down, but they are also really low. Daze is about 100 HP away from death, but they'll get the first chicken. Arrow immediately re-pulls out the recurve bow, puts some damage down on the chicken. Daze has been chicken on the other side here. Arrow's going to try and give him some cover. He will do so. He gets the chicken at less than 100 HP, keeping his duo partner alive. It's Ukrainian players. Very, very close fight there for Arrow and Daze. But they will pick up a fifth kill. Now, they have not picked up the full duo yet. They're going to wait for days to get back up here. A gold proc strap pulled out of a chest for Arrow there. Very, very lucky. It's interesting what uh, build Arrow play. W Ranger for cooldowns or the slow procs? Yeah, we'll have to check here. Uh, see, the next time he gets yeah. a proc strap off, we'll have to see whether he's going for the slow or for the cooldowns. 
They are currently looking up the hill. I think that's where that last chicken rotated off to. They're actually going to rotate away from the zone as it is closing. You can hear that slug fire, though, near the edge of the zone. They're going to third party this fight. This is what I love to see. In a non or in a positioning based tournament, they would have gone for the zone, but because it's kill focused, they are pushing the fight and they are pushing it hard. Arrow knocked to about half health. He's gonna take a snipe shot and will immediately be chicken and eliminated. Days is now left alone as Baggins picks up that kill. We're gonna check back in on Baggins here, knocked down to about half health. Munch as well, knocked low. But Days have good position on them um, because of the zone. They are going to third party that inside the zone chicken here. But they're getting shot from behind while they're trying to pick up the kill. The chicken's still moving through the zone. Baggage will finally pick up that kill. They're both at about half health. Trading shots. They will chicken that player with the slug rifle. I think that might have been Daze there off the side. It was Daze, yeah. They, I was watching Daze. Daze was trying to uh, chicken Baggins and Munch, but unfortunately Daze for him. Daze is just keeping up with the zone there on the other side of the building. Again, they're going to have to move back around here. And there it goes. Daze will be eliminated by Baggins. Seven kills for them, but they're not out of trouble yet. Oh my god, Five another seven four. kills by Baggins and Munch. They're looking very strong in this tournament. They are indeed. I'm surprised Baggins drops the healing station there. As a reminder for players who may not know it, healing abilities do not work in the zone. So you don't want to pop those things while you're Some in the zone. Moving muscle in. memory, muscle memory. <laughs> it is, right? Just pop it immediately, but then you got a 14 second cooldown. All right. Whew, the action cools off there. What an intense fight that was. Yeah, and should the alternate now have very good position on Baggins and Mission? They're gonna lock them right now. I, I, I see should start the rotation. Yep, he is moving up. You're right. Throws the conk bomb, but does miss. I Fires think they will snipe shot with try the to finish them. Looks like he's gonna rotate back up to the high ground. Doesn't necessarily want to push too far. Gets a nice heirloom shot, but just barely a tag. They'll be able to heal that up nice and easy. It's very interesting here having alternate play up on the roof and Shrudel playing down on the ground floor. You remember uh, that they came to this forge like maybe three or four minutes ago and they're still yep. here? Still holding that position. Yeah. It's great positioning, but unfortunately they will have to finally rotate away from that forge. Still only three kills to their name as well. They deciding In to a take top... a big circle. In a top 15 scenario here, getting yeah. close to our final 10. So Sneaky we... God and Lear checking back in with them. They're at 10 kills. A beautiful game for them so far. Yeah, 10 kills. And it looks like a lot of teams who are in the top spot, uh, they are here fighting in this game. Because it's already, yep. we have Alternate Shrudel, we have Coleman's and Runa, we have Lear and Sneaky God, and we have Munch and Buggins. So all the big teams in points, uh, they're still alive in this fourth round. Indeed. It looks like I just got the word from Mixed Perception, by the way, that round scores have been updated. They should be live. So that's very exciting. See, Lear put a great sniper hit down there. For everyone who's just joining us, welcome into the Realmcom 500 5K qualifier. It's wonderful to have you all here. My name is Mr. Wolf. I'm joined with Deathmatch here. We are on a three minute delay. So I'm saying hello to those of you who are in chat three minutes in the future. But it's great to have you. Back to the future. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Lalahu and Reed still in this one. There are five kills. They're also a full armor. 11 kills for Sneaky God and Lear. It's insane. Very impressive gameplay from them. They're really trying hard to win this one. Alternate and Shrudel are in a fight right now. They land a snipe shot. Forces the sword up above. But they are still hitting that sword player. Beautiful hit up high on that chicken here. They're trying to get him while they land. They do not quite get it. Shrudel is knocked down low while they are focusing on the other target. Shrudel is immediately eliminated by Baggins with a lightning slug. It's crazy how good Baggins and Munch in third partying people. It is true. <laughs> they are picking up kills so fast. Their target focus is amazing. But they are being third partied right now. You hear a chicken. There is a chicken right now. An alternate's going for the finish. He will chicken Baggins. They are both chicken right now. He'll pick up Munch Two kills. And Baggins Huge play well. by alternate. Huge play. And he was wow. able to not be um, shotted by another team. And also, right now, he's looking great for the uh, last circle. Oh my god. Oh! Whoa! Sneaky it was fast. God. It was fast. And Lear, with the double snipe, immediately eliminate him. He had no chance to react there. Uh, Colemans and Runa. Runa have zero armor, but Colemans is full on runes. But they have to rotate. Yep, they will have to rotate in a little bit. I think 
I think Lear and Sneaky God are in a great position. They have 12 kills right now. And you can hear a sniper shot again from Lear. We're watching Sneaky God. They have another chicken across the lane. And Lear will pick it up. That'll be their 13th kill, taking down Bot. And Lear have insane loot. The best loot that you can have. <laughs> I completely agree. A gold slug rifle, which is incredible. Uh, they're going to keep that bolt staff, though, which they should do on the mage, but that frost heirloom, always nice as well. Skull of Chaos going out towards them. You so can see that teams. sad little panda right there still just hanging out. So Rune and Calamity uh, should prey on Reed and Lalau to start a fight against, uh, uh, against Sneaky God and Lear. Right, I think that playing the passive is definitely going to be the way to go here. Look for those third-party situations and capitalize. Because Sneaky God and Lear have armor potions to their name, full armor, and incredible loot. They're a tough duo to take out right now. They already uh, had a lot of points in this tournament. And right now, this round looks like the best round so far for any team. Because it's almost 14 kills. Yep, they're, they're trying to put a stamp kills. on this round. 25 seconds before the zone closes in. This zone has barely any cover and no buildings in it, meaning we are heading into our final fight in this lobby, I imagine, right about now. So, Lau and Reed probably will start to fight against uh, Sneaky Gut and Lear, and it will be huge opportunity for Clemens and Runa. Exactly. Yes, they started. Start oh my god! Oh! Sneaky got Beautiful got... blast arrow right there. Sneaky got knocked out of the zone, but they still connect with snipe shots, forcing some potions out around the cover here. It's a great scenario for Runa and Colemans. I agree. Yep, they're eating some armor potions here from both duos. Taking as much damage as they can on both sides. The crossbow comes in, catches Sneaky God off the prize. That burns all of his armor. Lear TV is putting some damage down as well. Hits the cog bomb, forces him out of position, and that'll be a chicken. It's Are a push, push by Runa. Very smart timing. And just like you said, Runa and Coleman's capitalize, grabbing Lear and Sneaky God. And that should be the game right there. I believe it's the most important fight so far for this tournament. Because Absolutely. it was a fight for two teams that fighting for the first place. And uh, Runa and Coleman's uh, killed uh, Lear and Sneaky be because of they forced Lalau and Reed to uh, start a fight against the, uh, that team. Yep, that was a beautiful prediction on your side. You were talking exactly what they needed to do. Hold their positioning, wait to third party and capitalize. And they couldn't have done it better. That was perfect. They kept both of them alive and picked up all four eliminations off of the back end. And Runa had no armor and they didn't have such good loot that Lear and Stinky had. So it's definitely right? not... Uh, so uh, Lear... But Lear and Stinky got so many kills. So probably they still got more points than Runa and Columbus, even... If they absolutely like round. ultimately yes that that first place finish gets you the plus two that's very useful but it is not make the game by any means and them having what 13 kills at the end of the game there that's an insane amount of kills yes and let's see Colum and Saruna right. had seven kills in that game I'm going to go ahead and take a hot second here to check out our scoreboard thus far which it looks like it has indeed been updated that's fantastic so let's check out our individual leaderboards and see where we are currently at. Now, what I need to know, though, is who is a part of each team so I can actually give us a breakdown of, of who is in our first and second places. All right, so let's see. Team already qualified Lull. Let's find them here really quick. There are so many players and teams registered. We have to move through all of these here to try and find them. See if I can get a uh, control F to work here. There we it's go. All right, so that's and alternate Shrudel. and not shrewdle. Yep, alternate and not shrewdle as of right now are currently at the top of the leaderboards. Now, alternate and not shrewdle, again, this may only be a game three update here. So let's go ahead and check out your guys' uh, scoreboards here. We'll give you a chance to take a look at everything that we're doing here at the end of game four. So, yes, at 69 points, alternate and shrewdle are currently uh, in the lead. Crumpets Drowning in Butter. That is our, our next team here. So let's check them out really quick. I believe it's uh, points uh, not, not for all the rounds. Because I can see like, some teams uh, that in top and they don't do that well. Right. This, this, should be, uh, this should be game number three updated so far. How can Cops can get be in third place? Well, again, we do have a lot of uh, of players here that uh, that haven't played uh, in the lobbies we've been spectating. 
uh, that might have been popping up a lot more points in, in various different places. Unable to find Team Crumpets Dripped in Butter. Let's see if I can uh, individually search them here. Realm Lords. Crumpets Drowning in Butter. Here we go. That's Baggins and Munch. All right, so Baggins and Munch are the, the Crumpets Drowning in Butter team. They are currently our second place team at 52 points so far, with Cubcat uh, in third place at 37. That's Cubski and Schrody Cat, I can only imagine. Yes, they are. <laughs> Wohak Meter, I believe it's uh, uh, Rune and Coleman's. All right, so so roughly our top four did shake out about where we thought. Uh, just about who's gotten those individual points so far. Uh, all right, well, wow, that's a really impressive, honestly. 69 points there uh, in the number one position puts a huge point gap between first and second place. Now, again, this is most likely games one, two, and three. So I don't think our game four points, which just finished, have been updated yet. But that gives us a general idea of who our top four is so far. Is that shaking out about where you thought it would be? I believe uh, everything will change because uh, the points, I believe, right now is not correct. I believe that uh, Runa, Coleman, and Lear and uh, Sneaky God will be probably top three. Yeah, I do think there's going to be some very serious changes coming uh, on the heels of game number four. Game number four was huge for a lot of teams. Double digit kills uh, in a lot of places. So, so they are overall putting up some big numbers. I think there's going to be some huge swings. But I think our top four overall seem to be shaking out right about where we think the tournament has been heading so far. Just, just all about where, where those top four end up placing. I believe, uh, I actually, right now I will put uh, everything that uh, uh, top three in the end will be Alternate Shrudel, Runa, Kolemens, and... Lear and Sneaky God? No. You don't think so? I don't think so. And I don't so know we'll who have... will be third. We'll <laughs> I have mean, to like... see if the scores get updated. I'm interested yeah. to see if your, uh, yeah. your prediction... No, I mean like through. overall in the end of the tournament, so... Uh, I'm... I'm trying to make a prediction for the end of the ah, tournament. So you're, yes. yeah, you're, you're, you're going end of game six here. Yeah. I think they have had very consistent play. Um, your, your two teams that you mentioned here. And I think consistency is by far the most important thing uh, in this tournament. You know, even just three, four kills a game can put you up in that top 10 area. So, so the people who've been pulling consistently seven to 10 kills are doing a fantastic job. Yes. Welcome in everyone who's just joining us or who has been here for the entire time. Uh, again, to reintroduce us, uh, I'm Mr. Wolf, uh, joined over here on the Caster Desk by Deathmatch TV. Uh, we'll be giving you all of the action so far. We have just finished up game number four, which means we are well over the midway point in the tournament so far. We're going to be starting game number five soon. Now, this is a six-game tournament, so there's going to be six total games played. The top score out of all six of them will be awarded the prize money. Now, again, this is a huge prize tournament right we've got a lot going on here we've got five hundred dollars on the line which is a pretty nice payday for playing some realm royale if i do say so myself yeah it's one of those tournaments that everyone want to play that's why so many players absolutely getting a little bit of cash on the line can make a huge difference with the uh the competition that is brought to the game for sure uh, so for those of you who are a little unfamiliar with our scoring system, I'm going to give you a brief rundown one more time. Now, this tournament format is more kill-focused than any other tournament we have played so far. A Crown Royale is only worth plus two points. Everything else is a negative. And uh, if you're 11th through 50th here, that's a negative five on the round. So that's the most negative points you can get. But each elimination is worth two points. Every single kill is the equivalent of a crown royale. So getting high eliminations is going to be huge for you placing in this tournament. Again, the prize pool for this event is $500, with first place taking home $350, second $100, and third $50, all of which contain an invitation to Haas's 5K final tournament. So if you're interested in getting in on some serious cash prizes, these are the tournaments you want to be getting in and playing. Again, all, the 5K tournament will be a duos tournament, so you're going to want to try and find that partner and get working with them right now. 
All right, heading back over to us here. Let's take a look. Uh, Chad, I hope y'all are doing fantastically well. I would love to hear all of Chad's predictions on who you think is going to take the tournament thus far. Again, as people are doing commands in the chat here, exclamation mark scores will get you to the Realmcom hub. That is your hub for everything competitive Realmcom for every single tournament. So feel free to bookmark that page and get yourselves ready to be checking those scoreboards at any point in time. They are currently updated for games one, two, and three. So only the most recent game that we played has not been entered into the scoreboards thus far but that should give you a general idea of where things are shaking out thus far i believe some players can uh, have the not right names in the in the registration and it will cause uh, some problems with points like it used to be before so. Yeah, we, we have had a few registration issues. Again, y'all, make sure that when you are registering for these tournaments, you're putting in a clear tournament name with the people that you're registered for. You're role reacting and getting into the check-ins plenty of time in advance. Don't wait until the day of to get into the Realmcom tourney uh, server. Get into the Discord right away. Check in. Be ready to get into those channels, guys, because it's hard to adjust those things last minute, right? When there's when there's 200 plus players in a tournament. So make our jobs a little bit easier and get in there nice in advance. But speaking of, if you do want to play in the next Realmcom tournament, all you got to do is exclamation mark Discord, which I'm going to do in the chat right now. Exclamation mark Discord will get you to the Realmcom Discord where you can sign up to start competing in these events if that's something you were interested in doing. So it looks like we are in our lobby, uh, which is great for our next match here. Now, the lobby has not populated, but we are in the next match and uh, and ready to queue up. This is going to be on NA, correct, Deathmatch? Yeah, it's game number five, I believe, right? Correct, yep. Game number five. Uh, we are moving into, I believe, NA. Uh, I will double-check that, I think, before we start, but that, uh, that seems to be where we are currently at right now. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Action so far, very heated. What do you think of uh, of the spectator system that we have going here, Deathmatch? Uh, we sure need the better one, but it's still much better than it used to be, like uh, cycling through the streams, you know? Yeah, let me tell you, as somebody who has had to run multiple tournaments, pulling up 18-plus Twitch channels and just moving through them, uh, at the very least, this is significantly less laggy, which is great. So. Yes, yes, I agree with you. But, yeah, uh, don't have to worry about, about other streams those crashing. Those 10 case uh, tournaments in Real Royale in the beginning, uh, they had a special spectator mode, so we can see the uh, flowing ca camera, you know, like on the top. So it would be great right. for us to have it. Right, but you know, hearing that that's already in the works, I'm very excited that that's something that they're going to be adding, and just having custom servers in general is already fantastic. Yes. Um, I do wish that we got past the spectator bug, though. It'd be really nice to be able to see exactly where people are aiming and not have to control that camera myself. But it's a it's a small, minor thing to get to. Yeah, I don't like that we need to action. move our mouse uh, while uh, we're watching someone. And th right. also, it's super hard to watch someone when he's using sniper rifle. Yep, yeah, yeah. Uh, being able to, to aim their scope makes it very challenging. All right, we are now in the lobby. We're here in the Zeppelin. So let's take a hot second here and, and check in on who all we have in this lobby. Uh, so it looks like we've got by far the scariest of all of the players in this lobby here. Deathmatch TV is actually in this one. So, so we got to watch <laughs> out here. I think he's going to slay out this lobby. Ah, uh, yeah, from the water, like Amphibia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Deathmatch is going to become the Kraken. He will be annihilating people from yeah. the water. It's going to be terrifying. Yeah, Aquaman. <laughs> yep, exactly. Uh, we've got Endel, Mr. 2000, Idiot Mouse, and Heavenly, uh, Serendipity, and Grad. Uh, we've got Crippler and Galan again. Uh, Decor and MZ. Daze and Arrow. Batarka. So, and so far, two very good teams doing not that good. It's Mouse and Heavenly and uh, Arrow and Daze. Yep. Uh, you know, that can be a big challenge sometimes. A couple of bad uh, games can get you into a tougher mindset. Plus, yeah. it's interesting to see uh, that's one of the more regular duos that we've seen compete with other teammates, uh, that they're going to have to gel and find out how to work as a team together, and that can be a bit of a, a growing period. True. Looks like we've got White Hammer back in this one as well. A uh, few new people, though. Uh, yeah, I don't see a ruining columns here. Every game we watch, we have ruining columns. Yep. But I, I, I enjoy that we're getting some extra new players in here as well. Getting to see uh, a wide variety of the players who are currently competing. And here we go. 
We are off on the drop. Uh, it's funny like that you decided to go right and I decided to go left. <laughs> <laughs> The Realm Comcasters here going for a separate ocean drop. We'll see how that strategy plays out. Uh, I fear that they may not be able to have a very high kill count in this game. I died first. <laughs> you did. Yeah, it looks like you had the faster drop on me. I had that little peninsula I had to go around there. Congratulations on winning the race there, my friend. <laughs> If you want to enter into the next Realmcom tourney, exclamation mark Discord in the chat is all you have to do. That'll get you signed up for the next Aaron tournament. Day's fighting in the Aaron crossing. Day's are fighting, but I'm also in on a fight right now. Toxic and Zombie are currently in a fight. They already like killed Kuchi and Granddad. Get Aaron an Day's. elimination here. Yeah, looks like uh, Arrow will pick up two kills there. Zombie is chickened, but Sky is Lancer still alive fighting right with Low and Loris. There is action all over the map right now. Toxic, we're going to stick with this fight for a hot second here as he puts out another slug fight. Uh, slug shot down onto his opponent. Toxic and Zombie still alive. Going for the left peak. That's a dangerous peak there. You want to be careful using those left peaks. Some extra damage here on drop. A skull of Chaos comes in and tags them. Take some extra damage. That'll be all the armor for Toxic. You can hear a smoke bomb coming out. Someone stealthed and pushing in on them. As they rotate around, zombie still in decent health. A blink coming in from Toxic. They and have Aaron, they're here. They're here. They might go for third party. And there it is. That is Wolf God as well taken down. But they are being third party right now. Zombie will be chickened. He's going to try and get out of here. Toxic going to pop as many potions as he possibly can. Moving in. There is some damage popping in. It's and Sunstorm. It yeah. So it's Aaron Days. We'll fight them as soon as possible. Let's see. So crossing is like a lot of teams decided to go crossing this round. Aaron Days yeah, it is, already it fighting is someone. A hot drop it tends to normally be. Aaron Days with already two kills. They've got a slug to their name and they have the forge, which they're using to great advantage. They already have a bow. That's huge for this. Arrow game. changed from crossbow to longbow. Yep, you're absolutely right. That is definitely a longbow first forge. Now Arrow is one of the greatest longbow players i've ever seen so even with the longbow not being in the greatest state over the uh the crossbow in my opinion it is still terrifying to watch him use it yeah and as far as you can see uh, they it's not the first time aaron days changing something during the tournament because there was a big duos tournament when they started to play warrior and then they decided to play mage with hunter and now they played four rounds i believe with the crossbow and now arrow decided to get back to the longbow but still using the prox trap i think it's very important uh, what you're saying here talking about them adapting i think that's part of what makes days and arrow so consistent in their play uh adapting to the situation that you need or how you're performing in a tournament is so important and i don't think people adapt enough yeah and people should know that uh days is very good warrior and he was playing war oh, oh my god this yeah, looks chickened. like, unfortunately, yeah, he has been chickened. Now, Arrow is still up. We're going to pop back over to Arrow's screen here. He is putting those bow shots down. I don't think they can get the elimination on Days. Prox Trap flies up to the top of the wall. I don't think he's going to catch anyone, though. Days still alive here. He will pop up from his chicken in just a moment. Arrow coming around to give him that cover as they begin to push towards the chicken. Days will recover. And we are still in a 2v2 fight. Arrow going to try wait. that left peak. He will miss. Wait, wait, wait. Fight. I don't know why they didn't catch. push. He's got the right peak disadvantage here. That's unfortunate for him. They're both down to about half health. Arrow and Daze putting some shots in. They do get a chicken, but it looks like Daze will also be oh, 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 hit both of them in the corner. Prox. Beautiful bow shot from Arrow with the beautiful Prox trap as well. They'll pick up the first kill here as Daze continues to peck as a chicken trying to get the elimination. The double jump will put him over the wall, though. Gotta yes. get creative. That was Dr. Tepper. Uh, the proc trap by Arrow was insane. It gave uh, yep. so many damage to both of enemies. But anyway, it was uh, poorly played by Tepper and someone else. After they finished, uh, after they chicken days, they should. They had high ground on Arrow. They were scared about because it's Arrow. They knew right, probably. but as soon as they saw the arrow was in a different position from Days, I think they could have pushed as a duo and eliminated a or, uh, Days before Arrow could have re-entered the fight. I think that was a misplay as far as they were concerned. Yeah, instead of this, they started to take fight on the low ground when Days was already not chicken, you know. So it's super right. weird. All right, we're going to rotate ourselves around the map here. Uh, let's see. Loris or Lori uh, with Sky Lancer. They've got four kills in all uh, Perplex so Ghost and Inferior fighting right now in Vele. 
All right, moving over to Perplexity Ghost. Ghost you're right. Chicken. Looks like Perplexity Ghost has been chickened. By Zeta. He'll be eliminated there by Zeta. And Anthony Mood. I believe it's uh, Spanish and Argentinian player. They're trying to. They only have the one kill. One. Yeah, they're gonna try and finish that duo there. Shudel just killed Gali and Crippler. Yeah, that is a big play. You can hear that ice staff. Looks like they've got him stuck in the corner. Yeah, there goes if you're Nifira. already dead. Yeah, I think so. I think Nifira kind of gave up on that one. Just hiding in the corner. Looks like Schrody and Kubski will also take out Ronberg and Oni Light elsewhere on the map. Another big set of players eliminated here. Uh, checking on Denchik here, Denchik and Bot, uh, they've just chickened someone on the top of Forbidden Swamp. They're going to push on in here. They've already got a gold snipe as well as a sl uh, an heirloom rifle. Beautiful chicken play there, dodges a lot of shots, but Kubski will go down. What do you think? Where is uh, Baggins and Munch right now? That's a good question. Now, uh, that was some good play right there, uh, but it looks like they will take down Shrody Cat. Bot and Denchik will stay alive. Two kills a piece. All right, let's check in. Let's find out where. Uh... Baggins and Munch is still in Lost Forge. Like all the games, they start from the same spot. It's not been bad for them. Only two kills on drop this time, though. I think a lot of people decided to flex into crossing instead of taking the. Uh, there's drops. a fight uh, in Fungal, and they died to FPGG. Uh... FPGG indeed. Looks like he is about to pick up a second kill there. He will. Mr. 2000 will go down to FPGG as well. FPGG and Night King David have a good round for them so far. At four kills, not too bad Aaron, at all. Aaron Dace in Lumberfall already. Uh, Shuds and the real Beast Nation are currently at zero kills. And Beast Nation is dead. But looks like Suds has enough to get him back up in the Cold Mist Forge there. Not Shrudel and Alternate at five kills so far. One of our highest kills in the lobby. From what I know, they're currently around Goblin Gulch. Uh, now, if I had to be entirely honest, I think my least favorite forge in the entire game is Goblin Gulch. Oh, uh, I mean, like, it's underrated. There are some forges that even worse than Goblin Gulch. Outpost, for example. So? Yeah, Outpost is very bad. And in Goblin Gulch, you have more loot than in Outpost, for example. So also, what is what is your tactic? Let's say you drop the forge in Goblin Gulch. What is your tactic? One one defense? guy should be if it's mage uh, and if uh, should stay on top and drop okay, a sword. Okay, so you think one forge at a time and that that'll make it a lot safer. Yeah, just don't drop together uh, and uh, try to use sword in this location. That's definitely a play. But anyway, in it. in Goblin Gulch, there is a some spots where you can like try to f find the cover and not be super opened in uh, outpost it's super hard so i that's definitely true. avoid outpost the hill, up and outpost but th that's not the easiest place to, to defend or to not get third party yeah all right uh, popping in Skylancer fight here, is uh, fighting in in the jade looks right like now. denchik will uh, indeed get a kill right there we're gonna try and find uh, some of our other players who are fighting here it's low risk in Skylancer, but they're bo both chickens. Yeah, it looks like uh, Skylancer is going to get a chicken on the other one with a nice quick scope. Beautiful work there, keeping his duo partner alive. Revolver shots land, and Karma Strikes will go down to that revolver play. They're up to six kills. Beautiful play right there. They've got Seems some like great Karma, Karma was alone. Yeah, I think you're two. right. I think that might have just been a solo. Either they might have been eliminated already, or just a solo in that... Columbus and Runa in crossing, only two kills. That was a problem oh, for them. They right always putting some fire down solo. Swanson. One kill right now. They're in a Jaguar Claws fight. Trying to get those high ground peaks. You can hear the forge working. That may be a red scroll. It is, and it looks like Bieber is back alive. You're gonna grab that purple healing station as well. Trying to fend off those other players. Drops another forge, but you can hear him pushing right now. And it's Frost Hail Room. I believe for yeah, just knocked down to about half health. The healing station will get him back up and alive. He is taking some serious damage, though. Swanson takes some damage from above. He's going to try and soar out here. Beaver will come back to life. What a beautiful soar getting over the rocks there. I don't know if I've seen someone do that before, but he will leave his duo partner behind. Beaver. It's such a weird fight. Down. <laughs> I like that strategy with the extended soar there. Getting over the rock is a great way to escape. Beaver's still alive as a chicken. Yeah, I, I'm wishing him way. right now, yeah. He's in the forge. 
Let's go see if I can find Bieber here in the action. Pushes it, actually gets a kill on Baggins. Oh my god. Wow. Bieber with the incredible 1v2 outplay. Looks like his teammates shouldn't have abandoned him here. That was a crazy fight. And super weird. Uh, Danchuk and Bot have great team. loot and they saw someone. I agree. Natural and alternate at seven kills on the other side of uh, Goblin Gulch here. They were doing fantastically for themselves. Days and Arrow at four kills. They rotate into Lumberfall. Jeffrey, the best, and Shadow Fanks currently have zero kills on the other side of Goblin Gulch. So they're right around some scary teams there and in the zone. Viking David FPGG at four kills so far. Anthony Mood and Zeta at, at two kills. It looks like a Lumberfall ending. I think you might be right. Yeah, definitely somewhere near Lumberfall. Whitehammer has found himself an opponent. Gets sniped and conk bombed. He's very low and is getting pushed from two sides here. Knocked down to about one quarter HP. He will be chickened. Your daddy is too far away to respond here. Down to one hit. Whitehammer trying to chicken main. He will not be able to Skylancer. We'll yeah, Skylancer uh, have a lot of kills in this game. And then we check in on Zeta and Anthony. Mm. Another side of the exact same fight here. A beautiful fight. Zeta gets a nice snipe. Reloading that sniper. Fire coming in from all sides around this uh, this crossing. You can hear a chicken. You see a, uh, a blorp moving away as well. Zeta and Anthony are going to start pushing. Hit one shot on the chicken. Cannot pick it up. They'll miss all those other shots. And Aaron, Anthony, Aaron Dace will third party them right oh now. Oh, no. I think. Anthony tries to push Runa right there, but they did not push as a team. They lose their advantage, and Anthony Mood immediately goes down. Arrow already see those guys, and he will start to shoot them. Yep, taking a look at Arrow's perspective here from the top down fight. They've got the high ground as they can see people pushing in from crossing. Trying to get as many bow shots as they can. They're essentially gatekeeping here. They've got great high ground and great positioning. Pets and Steve just killed uh, Skylands and Lauris. Yeah, so so he's a very key fight. Uh, Aaron and they see that it's Kalemins killed Zeta. It means yep. uh, it's Rune and Kalemins in the forge. Yep. And they and attacking them. Aggressive. Yeah. So far, early damage from Arrow and Daze, but a sniper shot will even the fight out quickly. Arrow's going to back off and pop a couple of armor pots. You can see another player in position. Ooh, what a beautiful snipe there. Arrow knocked down with about 25% HP. He's trying to get over the wall. He just barely does. That's and his last armor potion there. Not very good runes either. They are in full retreat Not mode the snipe here. Daze gets caught by, by snipe. Runa. Very big fight. It's very important fight. It's so more far. important fight for Runa and Clemens than for Arrow and Daze because uh, I believe... It will be hard for Aaron Days to fight for the first place. I agree. But a, an early elimination from Runa and Coleman's would be devastating to their score overall. Yes. They are now getting third party from the top of the hill. Arrow takes a hit from that bolt staff. Days is fighting hard as well from the top of the hill. Arrow moves in, having popped the flare. He's going to blink up to the top of the hill. He does not blink as high as he wants to. Days will get both of the chickens, but he'll be chicken himself. I, I actually in. don't know why Aaron Days pushed into crossing, and now that you see they they have. Yeah, a, they could have held the gatekeep yeah, there, yeah. which would have been the smarter play, I think. But they will still pick up another kill. Wait for Days to get back in here. Whew! They are somehow licking their wounds and still alive. So Rune and Kalimins will be Runa. somewhere here on the right side. Yep, they've rotated to the far right side of Lumberfall and are moving in. So if we're in an end zone like this uh, deathmatch, where do you want to be positioned here for the end game? I made the... Uh, it's like uh, near the forge. And okay. You see the marker on the map? Yep. <laughs> I think this so one you'd will... rather go up towards that, that little uh, constructive zone as opposed to the high ground above forge? I will just sit in this, uh, in this position. I think, I believe it will end there. Let's see. Yeah, you see? So yep. I, w I would be just inside. I just don't remember the name, <laughs> the English name for this. How it's called. How it's called. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there are plenty of other nicknames in the, the non-English yeah. stream community. Yeah. Yeah, there's already a team in this house. It's alternate and shrudel, you see? They yep. have the same uh, tactics. 
<laughs> now you can you can hear some bow shots going in here. Uh, so it looks like alternate Shrudel, uh they're in a fight right now, actually towards someone located on Heaven, which is that area right above the forge there. Alternate Shrudel, Shrudel have nine grab. kills and they were in the first place after yep. four rounds, I believe, or three. Already rounds. putting in a really good game so far. Uh, mm. They do take a tag a little bit here. They may not be in the best positioning for right peaks, honestly, but they're doing okay. Now you can see though, Runa and Coleman's are also putting some fire down by the barn side, so they're kind of getting third party at the moment. Not very good position for Runa and Coleman's to be on side. They not even in the zone. Yeah, they do not have very many structures to hang out with here, but they can hear another fight going on on the the looks like the west side of the map here. Aaron Dayson on top of the forge. They have pretty good position. That is a, a smart place to be. I believe that was who they were fighting before. They're actually trying to take down this loot goblin if they can. Do not quite get enough damage here. Whoo! Just barely dodges yeah. the right peak. You hear a lot of fire going in from all over the place here. Not Shrudel and Alternate are now in another fight on the far side. They're putting some bow shots down. They've got someone trapped on the other side of a rock here. Conk Bomb goes out, does not connect. More fighting on the far side. 1,200 damage snipe. That'll be it right there. Shrudel will get the chicken. Yeah, alternate got hit by arrow from the top. Looks like if an alternate will pick up White Hammer TV, so they will take up a kill, even though alternate will get knocked a little down. The forge yeah, but alternate has well. zero armor. Steve will take down your daddy with the lightning slug there. Down he goes. 14 players remaining. Coleman's and Runa actually in the forge right now. They Is that their forge is active? Yes, I think they're waiting for the boss, right? And runes. Yep, looks like it. They have an interesting strategy here. It's something that I've never seen before, that if you forge near that little ledge right there, you can pick it up without having yes, to go yes, down to the ground yes. floor. So they played it very uh, smart. They di didn't need to go on the first floor. I love getting to see the tips and tricks of the best players uh, uh, doing stuff like that. Those little tiny things can make such a difference in a fight. Stephen Pop it over here, uh, Robin Otello, so far in the zone, just ran out of potions. I don't think he's actually going to be able to make it into these endgame fights. Back in, uh, Steven Petson, they are trying to get some peak advantage here. This uh, this match will, in the end will be great. It's so many great teams in the end. It's Shrudel yep. Alternate. It's yep, Aaron Dace. Shrudel Alternate just put down a huge amount Robin of damage Saruna. on somebody, but they are, they're surrounded by enemies. You can hear fire on all sides. Shrudel and alternate with 10 kills. Not Shrudel will pick up FPGG with a beautiful snipe shot. Arrow okay, Aaron, and this have good damage. position on alternate and Shrudel right now. Yep, we can see that fight happening right now. Days and Arrow are currently fighting against Steve and Petson, uh, uh, trying to throw party. Uh, yeah, alternate. they're pushing it right now. Oh no, Steve gets immediately hit by a snipe shot. Got deleted. Got deleted. Absolutely deleted. Rune and Coleman still hanging out on the top of the forge here. Shrudel and alternate knocked low, though Shrudel will get chickened by, it looks like, a blast arrow through the window. So it's perfect for Rune and Kalemins. Everyone fights except them, and they're just shooting everyone from the top. Yep, absolutely, I agree. But alternate this, will this is out. Okay, so game. Rune and Kalemins have to win this game right now. Oh, wait, alternate, alternate killed alternate arrow too. Well. Wait, Shrudel is still alive, so, so it's all about alternate and Shrudel against... Yep. There goes Petson as well. That's 15 Another kills. Another huge for fight for the final results. Both teams are looking forward for the first place. So yep, this is going to be a great play, fight. Uh, top teams here fighting yeah. it out for first. Now, like you said, though, Rune and Coleman's do have a, an advantage as far as pots are concerned. And I think positioning for this end game as well. I believe Rune and Clemens should take this. The question is, though, does it matter? Because Alternate and Shrudel got the kills, and I think ultimately they came out ahead in this it game. It doesn't matter. I think I just win. looked at how many kills Shrudel and Alternate have. I think they already won the tournament, to be honest, with this skills. And it's an insane 15 kills in yeah. a competitive game like this. I could not yeah. imagine taking on 15 opponents. Alternate will take some serious damage. He will not be able to hide behind the tree. Those hitboxes are teeny. Runa will take him down with a sniper. Yeah, perfect positioning here, really, from Runa and Coleman's to get the victory. Now, that's good. They're desperate for those plus two points. They're yeah, they play very smart, position. but you see they always don't have many kills. Yep. So they one of those teams that didn't adapt to the new scoring system yet. And Absolutely. it looks like There's Alternate and Shrudel really feels great to kill everyone, you know, like, and push everyone <laughs> and playing offensive. 
Yep, they're doing a great job of just uh, slaying through everyone. I couldn't agree more. All right, well, that is it. That is the end of game number five. We've only got one more in this thing. All right, we're going to check in really quick here. Let's see. Uh, the scores have been updated for game four. So we will be short this particular game, but let's check it out where we stand right now. So actually, with 76 points, is still team already qualified low? Yeah, Baggins and Munch uh, second place, and yep. Runa and Clemens third place. I believe that Alternate and Shrudel already won the tournament because they were on the first place with a pretty good gap uh, right after four rounds. And they just had a huge game in the fifth round. So I believe yep. they probably won the tournament already. I, I, I think they're putting themselves in a beautiful position unless they absolutely throw here. I think they're going to be in a really good spot. Uh, yeah, I agree. Alternate and Shrudel here are really dominating. Let's give all of you guys a look at the, uh, the leaderboard here so far. So uh, with our team names right now, uh, so we currently have uh, already qualified Lowell with 76 points. In second place is Crumpets Drowning in Butter at 64. Wall Hack Meta at 52. That's your Runa and Coleman's team right there. Uh, Lear and Sneaky God are at 35 points. That means our fourth place team is half the points of already qualified. That is ridiculous how many points they have been they've been putting on the boards here. Yeah, it's I think something will be changed because it looks like so many teams just have some little points. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I think that uh, that's the most interesting thing about adapting to this tournament profile so far is you really have to go for those kills. If you don't go for those kills, you are not going to be in a position even if you're getting top scores uh, in your placements, it's not going to make a big enough difference to to get through. Yeah. So far, we only saw alternate and Shrudel making a lot of kills, and Lear and Sticky Gun. Very, very good plays overall. Uh, a wonderful first five games. Uh, I've actually, it looks like, been lucky enough to hit level two. Um, <laughs> with the Realmcom cast account, just by diving into the water. So we're getting some experience. That's great. Yeah, and it's weird. I'm just work, uh, watching the uh, Realm.com. It says Days and Arrow had zero kills in the last game. But Oh, wait, wait. It, it's okay. Arrow 6 uh, Days has zero. Because oh, okay. I, I clearly right, so remember that it. had some kills. That's... Man, what an impressive uh, display of skills so far. Yeah, and <laughs> alternate shooter, they look so good. I mean, like they like having so many kills and they had f they won three games and one game in second place wow three out of five games. oh no 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 the one game they they won two games and one second place wow that's really yeah. incredible that's amazing all right, so there you go, everyone. We will get you the stats as soon as game number five is updated, but we'll be heading into game number six. Now, uh, for those of you who haven't watched the RealmCom tournament before, uh, the typical format is a six-game format. So we're going to go ahead and go over to the rules and scoring here so you guys can see a little bit on how these work. So let's check them out here. Now, again, uh, Crown Royale will give you plus two points. A second place finish is minus one. Third is minus two. Fourth through six is minus three. Seven to ten is minus four. And 11 through 50th is minus five. So essentially, that's what we're looking for here. Uh, again, anything past that is minus five. So that's the most you can get. Two points per elimination. And that's the real highlight of this entire tournament so far. I think it's really important to notice that, uh, that the, the kills have made the biggest difference overall in the entire results of the tournament. Uh, they're making the biggest difference in first place, and uh, it's going to come down to kill count, I think, for the sixth game. I know that, uh, that already qualified is commanding a pretty huge lead here at 12 points, but any bad game in this final round could mean defeat. Uh, I, I really do think that Baggins has the chance here if they really slay out on this game to, to take away first place if they do it correctly. How was the last round for Baggins and Munch? How was the last round for them? Yeah, I believe they didn't play the lobby that we were watching. Uh, I think, I imagine they did pretty well, but we'll definitely have to check it out and see, see where it let's is. Let's check yeah, how they played the last round. Alrighty, let me... Uh, Hop over into the Realmcom channel here. Let's see I'm where we're at. Baggins. I think all of the lobbies... No, no, no. They, they, they failed the last round. 
Okay. Uh, how many kill counts did they end up getting? They only had two kills and 15th place. All right. Two kills and 15th place, then that's not going to do well for them. So I think they actually might even be out of the top four. For uh, sure. Based and off of that score. and Shrudel, I believe, only can be uh, caught by uh, Rune and Clemens because Rune and Clemens third place, yep. right? And they played pretty good in the last round, too. So if Alternate and Shrudel will fail the last round and Rune and Clemens make a lot of kills, they probably can catch them. Yep, I completely agree. Completely agree. And that's the, and only, yes. the only scenario, actually. I, I believe all other teams are already out of uh, trying to win. I'm trying to hit that top three spot. Yeah. Uh, not top right. three, I mean like top one. So for the top right. one, I believe only alternate Shrudel against Beg uh, against uh, sorry Rune and Kolemans. So we'll see that top three showdown here uh, in game number six as soon as we get started. Uh, talking to chat a little bit here, uh, I completely agree, but I do think that uh, on the, the topic of third partying and positioning, I think that people underestimate how valuable those things are in any battle royale period that is by no means anything that's unique to realm royale i, th I think positioning can even really make up for aim in a lot of circumstances if you have I the right the most important part i mean like, i think so too even if even if you are not very good aimer if you're a very experienced player and you know where to push when to push how to push you can win the games Absolutely. Like, if, if we're comparing, if we're using me as a personal anecdote here versus somebody like Arrow, uh, Arrow is for sure going to have better aim than me, right? And I, I know that I've faced oh, up against anyone. him before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. But the old, the best thing I can do is try to get a positional advantage over him, right? It's not like Arrow is immortal. Uh, my goal is to try and get that edge over him so that I put him in a bad situation. You always want to play a battle royale on your terms. And that means rotating to the position to force people into bad positions. That's true. And actually, there's another way to win. It's uh, if you're paying attention to kill feet and you realize... So you, you can try to, uh, uh, to, tr to force some teams to fight each other. You see the kill feed, you see someone is uh, killed uh, in this fight, and you go th for the third party. So it's very important yep. to pay attention to the kill feed. It's very important to know who exactly you play against. Uh, right now, in this custom office, we actually can check during the fight who is still alive. No? Absolutely. I, I could not agree more. And I think that's, uh, that's something that's really interesting about Realm, if you're comparing it to, say, Fortnite, um, that you, as a third party, can hear a chicken when somebody gets chickened, yes. whereas you can't hear a knock if you're third partying somebody in Fortnite. So that can be a huge auditory uh, indicator that you need to push right now if somebody got chickened. Yeah, and very important also think, when you're in Zeppelin, you should know uh, who is playing which. So you see the nicknames in Zeppelin, right? So right. you can see uh, who is playing which hero. So for example, you know that Alternate is playing Assassin, and Shrudel playing uh, Hunter, let's say, but it's uh, just uh, uh, one of the teams, right? And uh, you know which skin they use. So if you see them together, you know it's probably them. And if you don't want to fight one of the best teams, you can try to avoid this fight, you know? So it's, yep. it's, a, a lot of things can be done in tactical-wise in the, this game, which is great. Right, or even, even talking about what you were just saying, that a lot of people play iconic skins that they've kind of become attached to that competitive player and and if you're say at the top of a hill and you look down through your sniper scope and see two skins that you immediately recognize you may want to rotate in the other direction instead of taking that fight like like those clues are so huge for you getting into the right positions to win those games yeah and the most smart players they keep changing the skins all the time yep <laughs> so you know sometimes you sometimes games, you get the tifu games. but mind games <laughs> exactly, yeah. Then all of a sudden you use somebody else's iconic skin and trick them into thinking you're somebody else. Yeah. So, my question uh, for you is, uh, in, in tournament formats like this, uh, in, in custom games, uh, do you feel like it's a better idea to drop hot and then possibly play a little more passively in the mid game? Or do you think it's a better idea to try and get your first forge off of just shards and then play more aggressively in the mid to late game? 
definitely second. Second, yeah. second rule. Yeah. So I mean like uh, so you have to try to go for good placement and average kills in each round. And so we can see that Rune and Clemens, they playing passive and they yeah, they're not on the first place, they they're on the second place. But unfortunately for them, Alternate and Shrudel uh, didn't have a really bad game so far. So what is in the mind of Rune right now? He he wants uh, he wants uh, Alternate and Shrudel be killed on the drop. So probably if they will go for first place, they should drop on uh, Shrudel and Alternate right now. If they will do this, it will be huge because uh, the only way for them to win the tournament, it makes a really bad round for Alternate and Shrudel right now. But I believe that Alternate and Shrudel, uh, they're pretty smart players and uh, know yep. both of them. Uh, they will go for super safe drop if, if they care. Because they might not care because they're already qualified, but it's $500, so probably, yeah, I believe they care. So I think that Alternate and Shrudel will drop in a safe spot right now. I think you're right. I, I think a safe drop, especially when you're already where you're at right now, is, is definitely a, a big deal. Yeah. For them... It looks like we've got Alternate in the chat right now, talking about uh, by any player in Old Realms, a lot harder to get more and more land on RNG. Yeah, I, I think that... Um, I personally have always felt like uh, skill-based battle royales are significantly more exciting than RNG-based ones. And one of my favorite things about Realm Royale is the Forge. Uh, the fact that you can use the Forge to create the gear that you want to have and run the builds that you enjoy. And I, I think it makes it so much more based on how you play the game and not about what chest you open. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, uh, it's it's such an unfair situation when, for example, uh, your enemy is forged Frost Elder Room and you have Epic uh, Elder Room, you know? So the, the difference in those weapons are huge and it, it can win you a fight. Well, for example, crossbow, uh, Fire Crossbow or uh, Frost Elder Room. Those guns right. are much better than the Epic versions. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Yeah, rarity definitely can make a difference, and that RNG does play a factor. If uh, if I meet an opponent who just came from Crossing and I came from Lumberfall and I've got a purple heirloom and he's got a frost heirloom, he's going to have an advantage over me for sure. But uh, that's significantly better than, you know, we drop and I've got a gray AR and they've got a frost heirloom because that's when RNG makes such a huge difference. It's hard to outplay somebody. And one thing uh, that also very important now in Realm, uh, in these custom lobbies, it's not enough push for everyone. So uh, yep. it used to be with bots that you can go for safe forge and at least manage to forge a weapon. But now uh, you will never guarantee a forge. So some players will not forge at all uh, during the tournament. Uh, during Absolutely. The, the Which round. It's a completely different way to play the game How many than playing have standard. About twenty or twenty-one or something like this. Although honestly, I think playing in a custom lobby in competitive would be even more different than playing in a one hundred player public lobby because I think that the skill sets are so much higher and people are playing around the forges so much better that it's so difficult to get a forge off unless you win your drop. I think in a public lobby, even with uh, without bots, I think you'd have a better opportunity of getting forges in than you do in customs. But yeah, having to play around maybe one forge uh, in the entire game versus four or five, if that's what you want, that's a, that's a big change in how you play. Yeah, and uh, right now, even if you go for the super safe forge, let's say double gulch, right? Which is right. uh, considering to be like one of those forces that nobody drop, you will get enemies there. I mean, like you cannot right. just land at. Well, if you land on the forge, uh, it's very important uh, that you can you can uh, start the forge for at least at least portions right from the beginning. And other team have to push you, but it's also a tricky moment because you can go land on the forge and every forge is like hot drop right now you know 
Yes, I completely agree. It's it's fascinating because I think a lot of, of players, even high skill players, I think they really rely on dropping on a forge and having enough to get a couple of bot kills or a couple of, uh, of player kills that maybe not be expecting them and get that forge in really fast. When you drop Goblin Gulch and there are two tournament caliber players there with you, it's not an easy forge by any means. Yes. And bot box now is not that uh, important like it was with the bots, right? For the forge. Yep. So I believe many players uh, taking Pennywise right now. To be honest. Yeah, actually, the last custom games that I played, I took Pennywise as well, uh, because you you spend a lot more time looting chests than you do getting kills and using those kills. Yeah. All right, here we go. We are now in game number six. This is our last game of the tournament, and thank you all for joining us so far. This one will determine the winner, as well as our top three qualifiers for Haas's 5K tournament. And just like that, we are the first people eliminated. All right, heading in on spectate mode. Let's give a little bit of a rundown here. So right now we've got the GOT team. We haven't seen them yet today. Uh, RBG as well, who's going to be playing solo. Uh, you can see Potatoception there uh, died, uh, who is one of our spectators, not one of our players. Mr. 2000 and Endel are heading in towards Jaguar Claws. Are you Chicken and Perisho are actually splitting? Looks like they are going to two different spots. That is a dangerous move there. Brandox playing solo here. I don't see Let's any not. big team in this lobby. It's insane. Let's see. We've got Jeffrey, the best here. We've got Crippler. We don't. We don't have big teams. Uh, so in this we've lobby. got Runa. Runa and Columbus okay, are well, down uh, here. So. Okay. So Runa and Columbus have to go nuts in this lobby because uh, th there is no. Okay, there is. Who, who can contest Rune and Columbus in this lobby? Perplex team? Uh, Oni Light and Ronberg? Yeah, I agree. It is really... It's their lobby to win here if they can yeah. slay out and do something really well. Yeah, that's all. I mean, like, Columbus and Rune, if they... And they know it because they can press tab. And believe me, I played with all the best players in this game. Rune is the, maybe the smartest player in this game. He just pressed up and he made a call for Clemens. Hey, Clemens, we only have uh, not big teams in this lobby. We have to go super aggressive to win this tournament, for sure. Now, see, that's something that we haven't brought up yet today that is brand new with custom lobbies. How do you feel about your ability to tab over... It's very and bad. It must players. be removed. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, uh, it h helps them so much. Uh, every player, so uh, so they don't need to pay attention to the kill feed. Instead of this, they just know who's left and who's, you know, like which team have well, one player, is, which what team have two players. It is a little bit more challenging to scroll through the the player feed, especially early in the game. At least on mouse and keyboard, because you can't use the scroll wheel. It's not that scroll. challenging. I mean, like, uh, believe me, it's it gives so much information. So it all does. the good players. Just we'll find a second to take a look at this. Absolutely. The only time you would really have any sort of pressure around is if you're in a fight, but then you can be looking at the kill feed as opposed to looking at the, the player list and still have just as much information. So Alternate and Shrudel uh, they and Aaron Days, they in the another lobby. It looks like Skylancer and Loris right now. You can hear a fight going on. You can hear some slug shots down. Picked up a gold hammer out of one of their first chests here. That's actually a pretty big advantage. They do have vision against them, though. A uh, conch bomb will go down, knocking them away. Skylancer moves in. You see, you see, he have chicken one. So Skylancer have a, a legendary uh, hammer, but still prefer green slug rifle. Yep. Now that being said, I do personally prefer the the way the hammer travels through the air compared to the axe, uh, even with it being on a low damage right now. I do like it. Skylancer is taking some third-party damage, unfortunately for him. He tries to pick up the kill, but can't. We'll drop a quick forge off as well. And crouch in with that hammer. Here's some slug rifle shots all around here. His teammate, Loris, moving up and firing that slug down as well. Grabs those potions, begins popping him. His teammate's still laying down some fire. Runa, Runa killed Galilean. Galilean. Yeah, so they fight. They probably will finish Crippler now. 
Yep, that is pretty huge on their part. Skylancer will be right back up to full health and ready to continue this fight. Sensor drone going down. Runa killed Lalau, so they're fighting two teams. Yep, and it looks like they might be winning both fights, which is absolutely incredible. Let's go check in. Let's see uh, see if they're still in the action. Yeah, Colemans have a golden ale room, so he what will drop it to drop Runa. There. That is impressive. Yeah, you can see the slug fire is still going down, so they are still in an engagement right now. So far, it's a good start for them. They have three kills, right? Flare goes and probably out. Probably they will have four. In. So it's, they will. Runa is one of our top Attention. players here. And there they go. Reed will get the kill. That'll be four overall for Runa and Coleman's. A full duo eliminated. A piece for them. Congratulations. It's First very interesting how in. Alternate and uh, Shrudel doing in another lobby. All right, PN here has been chicken. He'll be eliminated by Drift there off of the back end of that fight. Okay, Romberg lost Onyolite and was one of those teams that can give a big fight for Rune and Colemans. Yeah, that is huge. Now, it looks like uh, Crippler actually managed to get out here, which is pretty huge. Yeah. He's got 113 shards as well, so we can easily get a res off. He's got two minutes left before the zone closes in, so he's got plenty of time to get in here. But I don't think he's taking the forge yet. Maybe he knows there's an opponent here that we don't know about, because I don't know why he's not just rushing the forge for that res right now. All I believe right, that I believe that Rudin Clems really can have a big kill kills in this game. Checking in on Hasa here, currently at zero kills, moving in towards Valley. So he's actually gonna run smack dab into Crippler if he's not careful. Sees that forge go active and is probably just gonna immediately avoid that area. Bieber, one of our crazy survivors from the last game, has lost his duo partner Swanson. Uh, kind of around the Jade Gardens area. Runa and Coleman still at their four kills, dropping their uh, forge here in Lumberfall. Romberg near Jade Garden, also alone. A lot of teams already lost one teammate. Yeah, some good escapes for most people to keep at least one teammate in the game. But again, positioning doesn't matter all that much. So you're going to want to try and get that res scroll. I think uh, just trying to be one player and surviving to the end is not going to do you all that much in this game. Let's see, checking in on Serendipity and Shin here. They are getting a forge in uh, Autumn Fields. Oh, it's a team that won first round or second round, right? Yep, Grand. it is indeed. Yeah. Yep, they've got one game win to their name. Uh, B-Murf and Third Audi still not doing all that much here. Adapt and Too Risky with zero kills as well. Toker, Mr. AWOL with one, three kills piece. Uh, Perplex has lost Ghost. Uh, so they have lost one of their duo partners here at one kill for them. Not too much action scrolling around the board here. Everyone's just trying to find their positions and get themselves ready to go. Now, we have split up the lobbies a little bit here and there. So uh, that's why we didn't have a full 80 game or 80 player lobby here. A lot of our bottom teams have dropped out. Not necessarily interested in playing uh, already in the bottom. So uh, it's, Bob it's and two, two, bots, uh, two lobbies in the end. Yep, I, I believe it's only two. It might be three, but uh, yeah. we'll have to double check. And they might be just two lobbies here okay. for the very end. Uh, Farbro Bob taking some damage, getting uh, knocked pretty low. Six health pots still, though, so it should be able to heal back up. Toxic and Glitch doing okay as well. All right, looks like we've got a fight here. Too Risky and Adapter are currently in a fight. They've got someone in lumber or uh, in the waterfall here. They've got some chickens, and that's going to be an easy pickup kill here. That will be Bieber. We were just talking about him, checking with him on the waterfall. He has gone down to Too Risky and Adapt. Adapt and Risky in a risky spot because they're near Runa and Colemans. Looks like one of their Smash duos here is on, also in a really bad spot. Uh, they're getting knocked very low. They both got chickened. They're going to get back up again, but um, they're going to knock super low. Very little potions to their name as well. Checking in on Endel Zero here. They're also in a fight. Mr. 2000 has already dropped. Taking some damage. This could be it here. Endel will get chickened. And that'll be the kill. B Murph taking down Endel. Their second kill of the game. Okay, Grandin and Kuchi don't have pots at all, but have great loot. Really great loot. Uh... Coleman's and Runa, they've actually gone all the way down towards Autumn Fields here. Uh, like you said, though, they seem to be very good at p uh, picking those final zones. They're probably finding a good spot to, to hunker down here. I wish right. them. They rotate a lot, but unfortunately for them, they don't meet enemies. 
and they have to make more kills in this round. I mean, like... I agree. They... I, I, I actually don't know. Maybe they... Maybe they're going for second place. I mean, like, maybe they will go for safe play and take at least second place. It's not a terrible idea, but I, I, I think it would behoove them, given the point advantage they have over the rest of the, the pack, to just go aggressive. Try and get some of those kills, really go for it, and see what you can get. All right, Galean and Crippler in a fight here. Looks like they managed to get him back up, and they will take down RBJ JCAC here. Fantastic work for them. That's two kills on him, and the duo is still alive and in the game. I like how uh, Gali uh, looked on your screen. Yeah, he's, uh, he looks like kind of like a mermaid here, yeah, mermaid. swimming around <laughs> through the map. It's actually super weird because uh, on my path he looks normally. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Go to Lobby and Mac Bingo here with one kill. You can hear some slug fire in the distance. Nay and Strid, that actually is the fire that you're hearing. They're actually going after a loot goblin right now that they will take down. In a competitive kill-based format like this particular tournament, do you think it's a smart idea at almost any point in time to go for a loot goblin? No. I mean, like, uh, I would say one should always, like, look around. Another guy should uh, try to kill a goblin. So never go together for killing goblin, you know? So basically, I would say that one guy can try to kill the goblin. Another should always take a look around, you know, and make right. a call that stop, don't, don't do this, we have to hide or something like this. I think a common error that a lot of teams make in public lobbies is they will have the entire team essentially tunnel vision onto a loot goblin trying to take it out, and with the noise that they're making and the lack of visibility they have when focusing on it, it's so easy to third party yes. kill. Yes, yes, that's actually true. I wish Gali with Crippler. They managed Sharon to have him to have a good loot. Gate kept stone here. He's got a target behind that rock. He knows he's got him stuck. Rotating around here. He's got the sniper reloaded. He's going to try and stay in the zone and rotate around to get eyes on him. He does have eyes on one, but he's now in a 1v2 situation. He will take down one of the Smash players here. He is being third party, though. He will get another chicken. But unfortunately, he's down to one shot. Four kills total for the duo. He's got plenty of potions, but he can, can he survive the push long enough? So he killed one uh, Smash player, and there is... That's correct, but it looks like he might be getting uh, third party by a second duo here. Yeah, but where's the Grandant? Is he still alive? He got killed by... Oh, I heard a... Uh, uh, okay, yep, so... Runa, well. Runa killed Galia. Runa fighting... Uh... Yeah, it looks like Runa has indeed killed Galia, and Serendipity will get that other kill, but we're gonna pop over onto Runa here, see if they're still fighting Crippler. It's actually the second time they're fighting Colemans uh, Runes for the second time in this match fighting against Crippler and Gali. Yep, they seem to be rotating around the same sides here, and that is a snipe shot hit. This is another duo, though. Runo is going to take some damage. About one quarter shield. Five kills over off the duo. Conk Bomb goes down, does not quite land. They begin to move in. You hear Coleman's firing rapid fire with that crossbow. Snipe shot doesn't connect. Frost Heirloom finally takes some damage down. They will get the chicken, and there it is. Straight goes down to Coleman's. Maybe it was two solos, like Crippler and Street. It's possible. Uh, it's also possible they all might have rotated away from Six each other. Six kills here, for Rune and Kalemans and 20 people left. So it's still doable for them to make a huge kills game. It is. They are starting to get uh, higher kill counts here. If they can do well in the end game, I think they can really put off a show-stopping performance here. Yeah, but unfortunately we don't know how Alternate and Shrew are doing in another lobby. So I'm getting some information that uh, 104 total teams registered, 80 participants actually uh, arrived at the event. That's actually still a pretty good percentage. So 160 players overall in this tournament. And insane that even with 160 players registered and all of these people playing, our top players are still some of our, our normal top tournament teams. Like they're clearly demonstrating their immense skill at this game. Yeah. Okay, so who left? Runa Clemens. Oh, Perplex guys still left. They're pretty good, so they can give a fight for Runa. And they can indeed. Yeah, but looks like Serendipity actually got out of that uh, third party situation here. Still alive with five kills total for the team too. 
Okay, go to the lobby, please, and mark bingo day in Sentinel already. Let's see what is Luna doing. Perplex and uh, Nefira and Ghost are currently in a fight right now. On the other side of Autumn Fields, they're actually out of the zone as the zone begins to shrink in. Ghost knocked to half health here. Nefira as well. Currently has the healing station up. Hasn't popped it yet, though. Knows they're going to have to rotate in just a second to try and get out of the zone. So they're going to save the cooldown. It's only a green a healing station. Ghost gets taken out before he can use the movement ability or get to cover. Nefira is still running around. Ghost is taking some serious damage. He will not be able to make it in. Yeah, I believe Nefira, Nefira. going to die now, too. Yep. You, can, you can see there are shots coming from both sides here. Oh they are not God. in a good spot. Ooh! It was a great kill, by the way. <laughs> that was. That was a beautiful kill right there. Looks like that was uh, Murph and Third who managed to pick that one up. So I got Dabbed and Too Risky are uh, moving their way on the uh, Sentinel Hold side of it. They're going to get that tower really quick. Okay, Rune and Kalimis fight again. again. Oh! Yep. Kalimis got third party from the top by Adopt, which is super bad for... Yeah, them. this is it. Runa has indeed been chicken. Yeah. Oh no, Runa is also at half health. That's it. Coleman's has gone down. Give me Runa back. Runa, Runa is chicken Runa too. Runa gets chicken. He's got a chicken, but that doesn't matter. Once yeah. that is it. Runa and Coleman's been taken down. They will not be getting any more kills in this game. And I believe uh, even Alternate and Shrudel failed the last game. They won the, the tournament. That is interesting. We will we'll have to see where the final results go. But that is big. Absolutely. Only, I believe, six kills for the duo before they get taken out and so unfortunate yeah it looked like a good fight for rune and clemens but they didn't expect a team to be on tower also so they they literally got third party during moving to this team of jeffrey and who was that shadow flanks that is always one of the biggest risks you take when you're pushing another team a lot of times, as soon as a third party hears there's fire, they will just sit and cover and wait for somebody to make the rotation. And as soon as you do and try to capitalize, that's when you get taken out. Hasa and Skulishon still alive, too. Speaking of getting taken out, though, Farbro, Bob, and Bry here are knocked super low. I don't even know what Bry's doing. He's just, like, standing away from a bush here, unless there was a bit of a, of a positioning glitch on where he was. He was just kind of standing there taking shots. Too risky and adapt still moving in here. Mark Bingo kills Skullishon. Shadow Fang still alive. Actually managed to survive that third party situation. Playing for positioning at this point in time. Go to lobby, please. We'll take out Hasa. So down he goes. We'll see if they can find Scully Sean and take him down as well. Go to the lobby. Have uh, so many armor pots. You're right. Yeah, they're very set up for this late game here. We, we see a warrior, Mr. B. Morph, but he played with the sword. You're right, Adapt is also playing warrior, but he is currently running a slug rifle and sniper rifle. <laughs> so uh, none of the warrior kit here, except for uh, the healing shout and yeah. the heroic leap. Mm -hmm. We're down to our nine players here. The zone is getting small, and it's fairly open, too. That means we're going to be seeing fights fairly quickly. Uh, what should be Morph? Uh, He's sorting people. Right there we go. Beamer takes down Mac Bingo, but Beamer has also been chicken. You hear a double blink. They're pretty in a good spot with the uh, third OT. Looks like Murph will get back up. Six kills for this duo, actually. A very good game for them overall. Also, six kills for Adopt team. I believe that adapting to risky looks like a favorite in this round right now. Speaking of adapting to risky, are in a fight right now. They have high ground positioning and they managed to get a chicken. They're gonna lay down fire with that slug, but they are being third party. Can they get the chicken kill? I don't think they can. They're taking some serious damage from up on higher ground from both sides. Adapt is one shot away, trying to pop those pots as best he can and stay to the side. He will heroic leap out. Still be okay right now. They're gonna turn their position towards the other team that they are fighting. A barricade popped up to stop any damage. Adapt Very bad position for adopting Risky. Away. They are in low ground right now. They're surrounded by the teams from all the yep. angles. It was the best place they could go to stay alive, but not a good place to... And they go for the, for the fight in this situation. It's crazy. Yeah. 
They're back up on top of the hill. They actually have a positional advantage now. Another team in between their third party. I can't believe they got away with that. I believe uh, that guy had a basic ability cooldown rune because he popped uh, the wall again, the barricade. Yeah, he appears to be popping that yeah. exceptionally quickly. Yeah. But now they're all rotating into a very small zone with seven players remaining. You can see, again, they're laying down some fire. A quick chicken, that's a gold slug. They're one more shot away to finish that one off, but can they get the finish? There's the chicken right there. Let's see if they can hit. There now it is. They've got it. Beautiful kill by Adapt. They're up to seven. They're letting themselves get slowly into the zone. A sword warrior pops out of nowhere and gets killed by Shadow Fanks. They're unable to pick up that kill. Then they're going to pick up Shadow Fanks here as well. Shadow Fanks will get B Murph. Nice night by Adapt. Indeed. Too risky though is chicken, but this could be just about end game here. A lot of players chicken in this lobby. Yeah, that is just Going finishing the them. Shadow Fanks is dead. It was, is dead. It was, it was a great, great snipe by Adopt. Yep. Complete clutch right there. Absolutely. Yeah. This is the final fight of the tournament, everyone. A 2v1 Adapt and too risky. And there he goes. Unstealth immediately hit by the gold slug. And that'll be it. Adapt and too risky. We'll take game number six. Great fights in the end. And I really loved that snipe by Adopt because... Uh, it's actually won them, that game. I completely agree. I think they were in a position to take a serious amount of damage. One of them was already chicken.